Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4PlayerNetwork.com. Check us out at that address for everything you need to know about our community, monthly giveaways, and nightly live streams. You can even support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 4player. And last but not least, you can catch the live recordings of these podcasts every single Thursday night on our Twitch channel. We hope to see you there. Enjoy. Hey everyone, welcome to 4Player Podcast. This is episode 751. It is March 30th, 2023. I'm your host, Nick Henderson, joined this evening by Brad Simons. Hello. Christopher Guthridge. Hello. And Christopher Davis. Good evening. And we have some spice for you tonight. Before we get to that, I mean, in all seriousness, we got a great show lined up tonight because not only do we have a really spicy, spicy fantasy update, our fantasy league update for you uh uh uh, we're gonna be talking about the resident evil 4 remake tonight which is super exciting and on top of that we're gonna be talking about the new gameplay of from that they showed that nintendo showed of the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom uh which is also equally exciting so lots of good stuff lined up tonight um but before we get to that i just want a little bit of housekeeping um one i want to remind everybody out there if you're listening to the show if you're a long time listener a brand new listener whatever we would really appreciate it if you took the time to leave us a review uh, wherever it is you happen to listen to us. If it, if, it, if you listen to us on Spotify or iTunes, whatever, and it's a place that lets you leave reviews for, for podcasts, please take a second to do that. We would really appreciate it. Um, and, uh, you know, if you, if you watch us weekly on YouTube, just, you know, ring the bell or whatever, subscribe. I don't know how the fuck YouTube works, but do, do, it, do all the things to help us out. We'd really appreciate it. Um, and, and, and lastly, Fantasy Critic, I just want to let everybody know, if... If you are following along, if you're enjoying the fantasy critic stuff, which we've been doing since the beginning of January, um, I've been keeping a running tally of it, how everything is kind of laid out on the front page of fourplayernetwork.com. It's just a Google Doc, but I update it every day. I take a look at the standings and I update things as they as they happen. So if you don't want to make an account with fantasy critic or go through all the trouble of logging in or following or whatever, the, even though even though that's not a lot of trouble, you can yeah, find you it on the front page. Them. Yeah, I know, but yeah. you know. People don't do that. I don't know. So four Give them Network. options. We, we've given you options. It's on the front page. No, here, the thing is, no, whatever. It doesn't matter. There's a I, thing I on the so. bottom of the main page that, that ranks like the most followed leagues. Mm-hmm. But it's not like any random person is going to click on some random league, right? And be like, mm, I wonder how this one's doing. Right. So, yeah, Correct. I guess we don't. Not. Even if we make that list, it doesn't really. I just know not a lot of people are, are following directly, like, actually, because you can actually go to our fantasy critic and follow it. There's only like five or six people doing that. Yeah. Um, but we have, it, but the, the Discord channel is super active, and obviously we're talking about it yeah. every single week, and people seem to be really enjoying it. But um, if you want to just to get a quick stand, uh, look at where everything stands, you can go to the front page of fourplayernetwork.com, look at our rosters, look at how many points we have, <laughs> all that stuff. So check that out. Um, and also, quick update for the front page. I do have a, a broadcast calendar up there, which is really just our recording schedule at this point. Um, but I've been adding release dates for upcoming games and stuff too. So if you want to see, uh, you want to subscribe to our calendar, you get release dates and our podcast recording schedule. So check that out. Mm. But, anyways, enough about that. Let's do it. Let's get to it. We have a fantasy critic update. Some weird shit's happening. I, I don't even know. I don't. You know, so, some weird shit was supposed to happen, and then we realized, oh wait, I guess it's not happening yet. Um, which, so what happened was the first. Hold on, that looks weird. Nope, it's fine. It's just because it's um, the <clears throat> first trade was not offered. The first trade was accepted, and as soon yeah, as we, that we've happened, never had a trade accepted before until now. Yeah, we've never had a trade accepted. So a feature popped up, which was unexpected. And that's that the league has to vote on whether they accept the trade, which even then I still don't know the details. It's of majority rules though, right? We need, but it, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but I it, mean, we'll find out, out, right? It's, it's so weird so, that we have to vote at all. It, it is. It is. But here's stay out of our fucking business. Here's why I think the feature exists. It's to prevent collusion. Because I, I think it's right. trying to prevent collusion right because if because like when when we first started carlos joked hey just give me all all your good games trade me all your good games and we'll just split the money which is funny but also like absurd right that's bullshit um 
and when I when I look at like Era and, and other forums and stuff, I see like a lot of other people <laughs> do these leagues. Bucks. And these are well, they're just random people on the internet, right? They're not even necessarily right. friends. They're just people in a league. So they need stuff like this to prevent funny business. Now, given the trade, it might Oop, look uh, like funny business because it I was strange. I was shocked but, but when we, I saw this. We, we can explain the reasoning here. I'm especially you explain it. I, I don't know if yeah. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can explain you, the reasoning. You, so you need to provide some it, justification here. Let, let, let me set it up. I am the, very the on whole, edge right now. Yeah, which is fine. The, the thing is, I offered a trade for all of y'all. So none of this should be a surprise. And I made it quite clear that I want to get rid of um, Ultra, Ultra Kill. Kill. So Ultra Kill is an early access game. It's a very, very popular and well-received early access game. It's not about the score. Awesome. It looks if awesome. The game, if the game comes out, it's going to score well. It's honestly one of the highest rated early access games on Steam. With like, it's like in. I, I think I saw it's in like the top twenty high, most highly rated games on Steam or something. It's, it pe- people love the game. That's yeah. besides the point. The thing is, it's an early access, and as as you saw when I got rid of Valheim, I don't want early access anymore. I don't trust them. I think it's risky, and and I did a little bit of research. I'm going to admit. And I'm worried that I don't know why Fantasy Critic says it's expected in 2023. I don't know why it says that. Maybe it was like one some... person. I found one comment on like a, a a thread on Reddit where someone was like, "When is Ultra Kill coming out?" I can't find anything. And someone somebody wrote a comment that said, uh, "Probably by the end of next year." And that was in 2022. And I'm wondering okay. if like whoever does Fantasy, but, Fantasy but so Critic, saw that. Like, and, okay, and Chris, and Chris Davis brought up a good point, right? It, it launched an early acts. So so this is like a three episode thing, much like Dust, right. right? It's even New Blood. And where they're releasing three episodes, you know, like Doom episodes, right? A bunch of levels. And they're like feature complete. They're polished. As soon as they come out, you play them and you've played that portion of the game. And last year, um, about halfway through last year, they released episode two. And when episode three comes out is when it hits 1.0. So the question is, is it going to hit 1.0 by the end of the year? And I'm, I don't want it. That's the thing. I don't want it. And it did, it did launch in when it first launched in early access, it was, it came out in 2020. So, you know, Chris Davis brought up a good, brings up a good point where it's like, well, if you match the time between, and there's other updates and stuff too. So, I mean, and I told Crispy to, to look into this stuff, but, um, you're talking about if you look at the time between episode one and two, the, the time be between episodes, then, then it might not actually make 2023. That it might it might be 2024. But production um, can tend to speed up sometimes as you yeah, get more comfortable for sure. working with the game. For sure, for sure, for sure. But it's a toss up, right? It's a toss up. The thing is, I don't want it. I don't want any early access because I'm scared. I'm scared of a no ship. My whole plan is to play it safe and just to like scoot to the finish line with all low 80s and maybe a couple of high scoring games right this was my plan get on base i've been saying this from the beginning well storyteller came out it got me scared it's like a low 70s game this motherfucker is this motherfucker is freaking out over a 75 i got a 67 on the game bro i well you know that's scary too here's the thing you also lost some points on a counter pick yeah, I, I lost some points on a counter pick. That is completely. But true. everybody has. Literally, everybody yeah. has. Yeah. Not everybody. I actually, have. some people have some pretty oh. strong counter picks. If if MK doesn't ship, he he's got no. Whatever. We don't have to talk about counter picks. Here's my here's my reasoning. I want to get rid of it, just like Valheim. I don't trust it. I don't want to know ship. If I get a seventy, I feel like I'm out. Right. And for the people listening so, at home, for the record, you've already dropped Valheim, which we said is your 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 unconditional drop, and Overkill yeah. is your counter is counterpicked, so you can't just yeah yeah drop I, it. yeah. I can, that's the thing. The trade is for a counterpicked game, which means it can't be dropped. If it comes out, it's going to score well. If it doesn't, you know, you're not going to get points. But that's why I'm offering as much as I am. I'm offering how much you bucks. offered. It, 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 and the thing is, I made bucks. Here's here's the here's the thing. Crispy already spent a bunch of money. When I made these offers, oh, the man. whole point what was to give whoever takes the deal. Like, see, I currently I have the most money, and the the way I view the most money is when Nintendo inevitably like announces like their fucking Mario platformer or Donkey Kong platformer, which has been rumored. That shit's gonna score like crazy, right? 
Because even, the rumor, be that, gone, even yeah. the rumor for the Donkey Kong platformer is that it's the Mario team making it. So, but whatever. Yeah. The thing is, Zelda comes out in what, May? June? May. Mm-hmm. June. May 13th. Nintendo doesn't have anything right, else. For the, like, look it up. Nintendo doesn't have anything else for the rest of the year. My point is, some shit's going to get announced to come out at the end of the year. And whoever has the most money is going to fucking get it. And I was kind of bidding one dollar on everything because Here's I the wanted thing. to make sure I stayed in the lead. And Nolan's also been bidding one dollar, I think, because he knows I have a lot of slots to fill. And he's okay, real quick. Very, yeah. Let me just interject here about about the assumption that whoever has the most money is going to get it, because the way public bidding or the way public bidding works is that say that Mario game is announced, right? And then we're all like, okay, we have to. We're all going to bid on that. Everybody's going to fucking bid. But I don't think anybody's going to be like, here's all the money I fucking have. Because once you do that, yeah. you have no more if, money. If you're if you're Chris Davis or Crispy and you only have one or two games left, slots left, then why the fuck not? You know? Why the fuck not? And you know what? Honestly, my plan... Well, I don't even want to tell you my plan. Even if Crispy <laughs> doesn't accept the trade, y'all might not think that I'll spend all my money for a Mario game, but I fucking will. I'll sell a game to get a few bucks just to fill the rest of my slots. I'll figure it out, but I'm getting that fucking game. But whatever. The point is, I want to give him man, enough money to where, he's, to where he's comfortably in the money lead. But even then, even with the money, even with a might not ship, I don't think it's enough. Or he didn't think it was enough. So I tried to sweeten the deal by throwing in a game that already has a score with a good amount of points. Dredge, Which I didn't even know you could 83. do. <laughs> you can. We did it. It's, it's It was accepted. I, I did know because I've seen e- Easy Allies do this shit. Um, so you're even, giving away some it, of your points, is what you're, what you're saying. I'm giving away points, like and honestly, good points. I mean, like 13 points on an indie game is really strong. And which tell them, so like, tell so, them what so you're like, him. Even Dredge, I'm giving him Dredge, which is my most recent like like W, honestly. But the the whole idea is that even if this is a 70, Dredge is kind of like takes the edge off and he's still got that money that was my reason now 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 the whole thing with benedict fox that's a whole other situation i don't even want the game <laughs> and i know i don't think he wants it i said you you can drop it if you trade it um because i think his original idea was i'll trade you benedict fox i think because he didn't want it which is smart and i told him that even if he throws it in the trade i'm going to drop it which is true i'm not going to keep that game in fact, when okay. I drop it, you can't. Or whatever, You've already used your unconditional drop. No, 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 no. Oh, is that true? Yes, that's Valheim. Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. Oh shit. Okay. No, can, no, can no, we, no. Can no. we pause? <laughs> <laughs> can we pause real quick because we have Benedict actually Fox def- is part of the deal. Yeah. What? What's wait, up? Wait, wait. Can yeah. we can we pause for just one can second we so we trade? can describe exactly what the deal is because we haven't actually said Fine. holy we're what it. it. Walk away. It is, Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Brad what, is trading. Do, do you want wait. me to have been? No, no. I'm asking Crispy something. Do what I think. Fox? What I think is, I did a skim through Twitter, and I could only find two people who had anything positive to say about Benedict Fox from the demo. One of them was David Jaffe. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea what that means. Well, that's the perfect trade. And then that. some rando, like low number Ooh. account. Um, so like, here's the thing. I, I, I am, I am certain about what the score for Dredge is. And Dredge is a game that like, I actually kind of got excited about when I saw the trailer. And it's yeah, like, it just feels you good. You know, it just, it. it just feels good. And I did try to snipe it. So maybe I have a little bit of a, you know, unfinished business there. <laughs> Okay. It's 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 an eighty two. Maybe an eighty three. All right. Twelve, thirteen points. Thirteen so, points. Right? So for everyone so, listening at home wait, wait, who yeah. doesn't understand yeah. so, what's hang going on, on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You, you, Chris Davis is trying to outline what the actual deal is being I'm offered. Still, I'm still explaining the deal. It. Hang on. But you're on. okay. So okay. so the money and the, the money and the ultra kill thing, that's that's one thing, right? The other thing is, I want him to take Benedict Fox because I don't know what to expect from that game, and I think it's possible it'll fall under 83. So basically, I'm just trading that one for another game that I know is an 83 and a scoring point. Mm. All right? Right, right, so, right. So though that is offset. That is, like, I'm taking one kind of weak spot of my list 
and I'm I'm reinforcing it. Okay, yeah. and then the money ultra kill thing is more like I don't know what ultra kill is gonna do, but I feel like I'm in the upper echelon of the league at this point as far as like like. What might happen throughout the the year? I feel like I have more of a position to make risky plays, right? It's possible Ultra Kill comes out this year, and if it does, it's probably going to make a lot of points. It might miss, and I don't know what's going to happen, but I feel like the rest of my list is really strong, and if I've got a lot of buying power, and I can just snap up something hold really on. nice hold in the on, summer, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, then okay, I might I still be in a strong your position. Reasoning. I mean, we've, we've talked this out. We accepted the trade. I forgot that I can't drop Fox. My question is, do you you want me to take an extra L on this? I feel like losing fifty dollars and dredge is a pretty big L. Why do you think I was like, why are you doing this? <laughs> Multiple times and you're just like, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I was You're like, I just I don't I don't want the risk. I just don't want the risk. It's just bothering me. So, 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 so wait, 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 wait. When you accepted the trade, did you know I couldn't drop Benedict Fox? Uh no, but it doesn't really change my feelings about the deal. Okay, okay. No, exactly. So so my question is if, if I rescind this and because it would be nice to get rid of it without it having to be my unconditional drop, you know? Oh, but what else would be your unconditional drop? So much of shit is counterpicked. It's 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 a it's a flexibility for stuff I might pick up later. Uh, but see, but see it gives me a little more comfort in bidding. But see, the thing is Fox kills the deal for me. Oh, okay. Cool. I'm fine with that. All right, all right, but, we but, we but, we move on. on. We got to move on. We spent way too much time talking about this. We still got other updates to give. <laughs> that that just gives you. If you want to find out how the your how the terms are acceptable. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But, but here's the question. Here's the question. Oh um, my God, Brad, no, I'm no, voting no, yes hey, right what, now. What what? what is, so, okay, so Chris Davis is chaotic, and he he doesn't even care who wins. He just wants me to lose because he's Chris Davis. And <laughs> he's weird. Um, but the, the the question is fifty dollars. The question is. This is this is not about the the specifics of the trade. My question is, do y'all have any reason? Because this could affect trades going forward. Do y'all have any reason why you would vote no on a trade like this? I mean, it's one of those things where I don't really know it until I see the trade. I mean, no, but 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 my question is why? Because I feel like if it's so easy for a trade to get blocked, then exciting stuff's not going to happen in this fucking league. Dude, exciting so, stuff happens every week on this fucking thing. No, it but I, really... I mean, like, there's no movement. We're all just going to keep the games we we have, and you know, like, like Chris Crispy was saying it earlier, March, Brad. or last it is week, March. Is wants... no, no, but what Crispy was saying last week or the week before, he w- he bids on stuff with the expectations that there's going to be some fucking trades happening, and I feel like this is the first one that actually went through, and people were already like, mm, I don't know, no, 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 no. I mean, but it was I more like, just I feel like that's weird, more right? Just complete shock at like what the like the the amount of stuff on the table which is great which is great stuff it's what people want to see we we need to move on to other updates but you're right i mean i th- i think the only reason anybody would actively vote no on something is if they suspected there was some kind of weird collusion going on which obviously is not really going to happen here i don't think yeah let's uh, <laughs> no, let's see let's see what the summer's like i, I feel like it would be more obvious it would be something completely stupid okay well guys uh, for, for to find out how this turns out and more, obviously, conti- one, continue listening to the podcast. Two, join us in Discord at discord.gg slash four player. We're going to keep you all posted every day when things like this change. But I wanted to give other other, other smaller listening. updates. Uh, I, we got some points, a, a few extra points, a few more points on the, on the board since last week. Uh, with Terra Nil, it released. That's on Chris Davis's list. He got 11 points. I think that's where it was last time I checked. 11 points for that, which is... <laughs> Chris Dave, Crispy's making a face. I don't... Oh, oh no! no. It's actually just, at twelve just, points. Just random points. people in my DMs right now. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I, I just no, not unrelated. <laughs> okay, I don't want okay. him to even accept the trade if he thinks it's like not really? even fair. Like if if his whole reason, I'm not is look. I'm not in, in in my trade offer, Brad. If you don't, wrong. if you don't want to do the trade. I, I will not do the trade. I've already, I've already rescinded the trade. I'm okay. negotiating our next trade. Wow. Our next trade. Brad, okay. As far as I'm concerned, Brad, you owe me for reminding you that you can't drop Benedict Fox. Well, okay. 
I do own Nick. I do own Nick. Let me just tell you, I, I, I don't I don't want to see numbers that end in five. How about that? What does that mean? Oh, you're saying 60? Come on. I, the thing is, just the last thing, I swear to God, if he accepts this trade and I lose Ultra Kill and Dredge, I, I have seven spots to fill with like 30 bucks. Yes. <laughs> this is insane. So okay. I don't... But that's your strategy, right? That you're going to know about all these like kind of no, smaller I, like I've JRPGs seen, seen that we happen. might not know. I, I've you're going to creep across happen. the... Across no, the no, finish no. with games like Fuga. <laughs> you know? I, I've seen this shit happen in another in, in one of the Easy Allies leagues where somebody spent like nearly all their money on like a big game like during E3, right? Like, you know, like I said, like a Mario. And, and he just needed more games, but he kept getting like outbid by like $2 bids and stuff. He couldn't get his fucking roster filled. So I don't know. We'll figure it out. But here, here, okay. Here's my... Oh my God. I, 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 I do own Nick. It's only May or March. <laughs> it's only for another day. I mean, my my here here's my conundrum here, is that oh if I approve this, oh for fuck's sake, Chris Davis, go ahead. Brad goes in the toilet, but Crispy gets a shit ton of money, and Crispy has been gunning for me this entire what? Critic not you, list. not you particular. You Chris double that- counterpicked me, my my man. That, oh, that doesn't have anything to do with you. Oh. That's just draft shit. Chris, Chris Davis, that has nothing Chris to do with Davis. you. It's to do with the games that you drafted. Yeah, Chris Davis, I've, I've already killed you. Like, you're dead. I feel I'm, the insult. I'm not worried about you. <laughs> I am even more insulted now. Okay, okay. Y'all, y'all are stressed out. People are liking Exo Primal, which is my nightmare come true. <laughs> Because that's my counterpick. My other counterpick. <laughs> okay, okay, guys, I gotta get the rest of this update out. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's hear okay, it. Thing, last thing, we have some. We have uh, a pending trade. First of all, before we get to the pending trade, we have pickups from last week. Uh, Nolan picked up Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, which is that uh, Jet Force, no, Jet Force Gemini, Jet, Jet Set Jet Radio, 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 like a uh, spiritual successor. Uh, Carlos, Carlos picked up Counter Strike Two. That motherfucker. He's, he stole he's it from me. In. I got to tell Carlos in person that he won Counter Strike Two. That was that was pretty nice. I was, so I was standing there. I was standing. I was like, "Oh, the bids closed." And I pulled up my phone. And I looked at. It, I was like, "Hey, look, you got Counter Strike Two. It was great. It was a great moment." Um, and Chris Davis picked up Lego Two K Drive. Chris, I... fun fact: Chris Davis, who only has two slots le- left on his list, I think now one maybe slot. one, one slot. He had to. He only has one now, but he bid on Counter Strike Two. You were per- you were willing to pick up Counter Strike Two and Lego Two K Drive, and then basically just not have anything else exciting happen. No, to I would drop D- Dead Island Two. That is my intention. I just need to find a worthy successor. Well, it's no, you, it's you March. can drop it without replacing it. You know that, right? Hey, you Brad, would you like it. would you like Dead Island Two? Okay, look, dude, I'm trying to make. I'll take twenty bucks. Here. Now you're being silly. Well, okay. everyone's going to approve that one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and lastly, last update for the week. I just want to, uh, we have a pending, we have a pending pickup. Um, it's Tekken 8, which is, uh, it the says. Choice. That I mean, is. is it, that's Brad, right? It's got to be. Fun. That, be the, fun. the marketing Brad. machine hey, listen, is going is insane league. for this game right We're now. We're not bidding on games that we want to play. It's no, no, games dude, that we think are going to score. And I'll, t- I'll tell you this. Tekken 8 is a game that's going to score well. But I think it has a lot to do with there's a lot of coverage. There's they played it at Evo Japan. They have like they have like probably eight different character trailers and it seems oh, yeah. weird that they're doing all this so early in the year if it doesn't even hit this year. Yeah. But it's but people are saying if you pay attention people are saying that that it's it might not actually make it this year so I, I don't know it's it's a weird one or because if you listen Let's to fighting game players they said it's still early which it doesn't look early it looks if really it's crispy polished. if it's crispy and crispy takes home tekken 8 he has two of the year's biggest uh fighting right. games yeah. on his roster uh wait <laughs> unless, oh, yeah, unless, right, yeah. mortal, but, unless boy wouldn't that be something drops. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> i mean Mortal Kombat I'm saying, 2024. All I'm saying is, is Harada never said anything about 2023. There is no date for Tekken, and he did not say it was coming this year. 
All right. So I don't. Well, so there, so there you have it. That's uh, that's the week in fantasy critic. <laughs> Again, of course, everybody, if you're enjoying this, please one, if you if you missed our initial draft, go back and check it out. It was our first episode of 2023 back in January. Fun show. If you want to get a really quick, uh, if you want to get up to speed with what our initial picks were, great episode. Go listen to it. Um, also, g- join us in Discord at discord.gg/fourplayer. We have a fantasy critic channel dedicated to it, and it is super active and it's an exciting time we're having a ton of fun with this so uh so check that out but now uh i want to run through headlines for the week um before we get to our before we talk about zelda um which i guess is also a bit of a headline in and of itself but i had i I originally had a uh a headline on here which changed abruptly (laughs) a few hours ago the original headline was that ubisoft dropped out of e3 uh which which was right on the, on the heels of Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo and uh, who else? I mean, like every time, every every day, it seemed like there was a major company dropping out of E3. Right. The only one that was committed to go to E3 was, ironically, Konami. Yeah, <laughs> that's the weirdest fucking twist I've ever seen. Um, so that happened. Uh, the the Ubisoft thing was yesterday, I think, and then today. Uh, E3 is canceled. Boom. E3 is done. Uh, you know, this was supposed to be the first in-person E3 since 2019. Um, and, you know, obviously it's been, it's been weird. It's been like progressively week after week. It's just kind of like, what even is this show anymore? Like, like I used, I loved going to E3. If you all know, I love going to E3. Yeah. I would, I, like if, if there were no, if there was nothing stopping me and, you know, concerns about getting sick or anything wasn't even a factor, I still probably long, like months ago, I probably would have been like, I'm not going because like, what even is this show? Like everybody is doing their own thing. Um, and that's I mean, that's for me, that's that's rough. I, I, I loved this show. I was there was part of me that was secretly hoping that I could one day go back to it. Um, but that seems less and less likely at this point. Um. I mean, I guess the the question now is, and this seems like a silly question to be asking, considering we were having this conversation before because of COVID, and now we're having it because of, it's like they've officially canceled one just out of pure spite. You know, I mean, well, not spite, <laughs> but like, you know, there's nobody, like, their lineup is gone. Like, their show floor would be fucking full of, you, you know that, you know, in the that corner of the convention that used to just have a bunch of shit that, like, like was dead and, like, Nobody really cared about it. It was just all kind of that weird stuff that gets kind of like they, they, where they Naughty America the was. Yeah, where Naughty America was, and <laughs> <laughs> like, but, but like, there's a lot of like, uh, like third third party like accessory booths where they're like demoing like weird accessories and shit. It's just you know when you're when you're on like the main show floor of E3, you're like in the, the Nintendo booth, the Sony, Microsoft. It is just like it is packed into shoulder to shoulder. There is just video games everywhere. It is it is an amazing experience. And then you go over to that like weird corner and it's like suddenly it's like you know there's tons of space to move around. There's not, there's no lines for anything. It's just kind of, it's just kind of dull. Dark. I mean, they don't turn all the lights dark on. Dark and grungy. Like, <laughs> and, I mean, and, look, and that is like what the whole show floor was going to be at this point. Well, let's get real here. Long story short, it's dead forever. It doesn't Ooh. come back from this. This was repop that was could, saving yeah. it from the ESA. This was like a last ditch effort. And they were like a legit, I mean, they run like Comic-Con and shit, right? Like yeah. this was its chance to ex- still exist and it was a huge fucking whiff like it was a joke e3's dead it, it, and it's not because of who was running it it's because through covid and through whatever all of these publishers realized they don't need an in-person event anymore not one right. where you spend a fortune on booth space so that's why everyone pulled out and then it snowballed. And I think who's going to have enough confidence? Where's there going to be enough momentum from enough publishers for another one of these to exist again? Because the whole point is all these publishers are going, well, if all these other publishers are out, no one's going to care as much. People aren't going to care as much about it, which means our money for being there is not worth it. And they're very expensive right. to go to these yeah. things. So mm-hmm. I think E3 is dead and gone for good. It's done. No, I, I, I think you're probably right. I mean, it, if, 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 I mean, the no, right. I mean was I, on the wall, even before COVID and 
Yeah, I mean, it, when it was COVID I mean, hit. Every publisher looked for the option of how do we just show off our stuff without these trade shows, and they figured it out. They figured it the out. Last two E threes that we went to, either, I mean, there was always like two of the big three, right? There was always like Sony and Microsoft, or Microsoft and Nintendo, but there was always one that was like. We're, we're going to be across the street or we're going to be at some other thing. Same time, but like we're yeah. doing our own thing, not involved in E3 at all. Um, so that was like the beginning of it. And 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 it, it was a weird, weird time to be on the show floor and whatnot. When, especially when you, you realize out of anything, it's done. Yeah, that's, that's true. That was that the is, biggest sign. They showed and, 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 and everything. Like, my instinct, my, my first thought was like, well, you know, what if something new kind of, t- something new and innovative kind of like cropped up and took its place. But I don't, I, I don't think that's, it's the Kiwi thing, if anything, but it ain't going to be E3. So uh, share your E3 memories. It's over. No. Mm. I mean, I'm really, this makes me very, very sad, but I'm also kind of happy the way it, that it ended up ultimately happening the way it happened because I I was the kind of person who would like, I'm going to like, it was like, I'm going to E3 every year until I'm told that until there's like a way that like somebody tells me like, I literally can't anymore. That's what I'm doing. Uh, and then E3 and then COVID happened and it was kind of like, well, obviously I'm not going to this convention, even if they have one r- right now. Um, so like I, w- I, there was like a two, three year period, obviously, right where I was just like, well, I'm just not going. I mean, if even if they had one, I'm not going. So I'm now I'm used to not going. <laughs> but so like Everyone now that now that it's going. finally dead, and I wasn't going to go this year either because and I oh, that was very I made that decision very early on because it was already starting to look questionable because almost right out of the gate, Sony was like, we're not going. And I was like, well, Sony is like, has some, my, some of my favorite memories of going to E3 are from Sony, like the press conferences, the Sony booth. I love the Sony booth. Like, this, like that's already a big L for me. Um, so it was already looking, looking whack. And then, and then I forgot who came next, Nint- Nintendo or Microsoft or whatever the fuck, but it just became less and less of a thing. I... So I had already come to terms very early with the fact that I'm just not going this year. I don't think it's exactly dead in the water. I um, think it's dead. I I don't, I, I, don't. I don't think so. I I think that because Reed Pop came on with the ESA back in July of last year, and that's not a whole lot of time to actually come together and build a whole new version of this event. But I mean, but here's the you problem: got, you got to like, forge this relationship. You're never, going, and, you're never going to convince Nintendo, Sony, or Microsoft to sign on ever again. Like they, no they fucking way. not necessarily. I do. I, so, I, Sony, I mean, no. Sony, Sony, I think is gone. I don't think Reed Pop's ever going to try again. The fucking Reed Pop guy was on Twitter saying, "Well, I tried." That was their chance. That was their, you know. Yeah, but also, they are Microsoft, a, they are an Microsoft, events Microsoft, company that Microsoft is getting was in, already out like two years before E three before COVID hit. Like the, their last two E threes, quote unquote, were in the fucking. Uh, they yeah. Uh, they they weren't in the building. The they were across the street. But they weren't part of the event. They weren't technically part of E3. Yeah, but they were they were physically within walking distance of the event. Okay. So they were cursorily, they weren't officially attending, but they were there. Okay. Well, they weren't they weren't gonna be this year. I know. I understand that. What I'm saying is that Reed Pop's focus is on event planning stuff. All right. PAX East evidently did really well. Okay. Sure. So if they're going to continue to grow and expand and, and survive, they've got to do something. Mean? And the, E3 the only... has such brand recognition and strength that they take another year. They forge those relationships with those publishers and developers. This they could like have a good chance of that happening. What do you year. mean strength? What? I mean, I, I, like you said, you said brand recognition and strength, but this yeah. is just proof that like, no, it doesn't. You, you and I understand what E3 is, okay? A lot of but people listening to us understand what E3 is and how shitty the ESA can be. But there's a metric fuck ton of other people out there that are never going to hear us, pop? don't even know who we are, and they all they know is E3 is the time of video game excitement. That's know, what but they that, know. But, but here's the problem. that that That's not changing. We're going to continue to call June E3 until the end yeah. of time yeah, because sony is gonna sony is gonna continue doing these big these big showcases microsoft's yeah. got two th- events planned on the same day in june nintendo is yeah. gonna do something big like we're yeah. still going to have e3 it's just not going to be e3 anymore but people are going to continue to call it that but that's 
but that calling it that doesn't bring the actual event back if e3 if quote-unquote e3 ever comes back in like an actual physical form anymore it's going to resemble something closer to pax but like and there's it's not and, gonna it's and not, that's probably where read pop wanted to take e3 like that but even then, and that's like, not necessarily uh, a bad thing the thing is why even bother with e3 if it's going to resemble pax when you have pax yeah I mean, I mean, I, know, I think I think there's probably <laughs> why do why should we've been seeing even go to PAX then? I mean, why should they? because that's where <laughs> everybody was. Yeah, like now that now that they've I mean, the, the way that the way that video game companies handling their handle their marketing anymore is so much more strict than it was, you know, even when we were going to PAX. Oh, yeah. Like, like, look at all the closed media events that are happening now. EA does one for every game. They just did one today for fucking the new Star Wars game. Yeah. And they're putting they're putting review embargoes until next week. Like, they like this. You know, they like to have more control over who's showing up at their events, who's seeing what. And at a place like E3, like, they have less control. I mean, it's it. We, we do need to move on. But I mean, like... I, I see what you're saying, Chris Davis, because part of me is very sad because I love I love what E3 was. But, you know, the future might be exciting in a different sense. It might be like, well, maybe instead of focusing on us trying to go to E3, maybe it should be about like, you know, going to some of these going to like hand handpicking some of these other like big events that are focused on like one or two games that these publishers are throwing and like that are they're making a big deal out of and going to those. Those can be exciting I mean, in and of, sure, of themselves. No, I, I get that. And, and my a lot of my. I'm not upset, but I'm disappointed that it's not mm -hmm. happening again. I'm hopeful that we'll see it happen again. I think the greater loss here is that E3 has always traditionally been a time in which developers can meet with publishers and other developers to pitch their games and make deals and figure out new I projects. Feel like that's what, I kind of feel like GDC is filling some of that void at this point. GDC Maybe evidently is not getting the attendance numbers that... Well, that's because they caught, they charge you an arm and a leg to go, and maybe they need to yeah. start focusing on Maybe that. Maybe there's like, also was... something to the fact that like the industry is consolidating. There's just yeah, fewer I mean, bigger true. publishers. They don't need to have this big conference anymore. But at but like, the same time, we're, we're, we, we keep seeing... It's like every every two weeks, there's a new studio that's opening up with uh, big names from big developers wanting to grow off and do their own thing. Like, yeah. I mean, but here's work on Bioshock. All right, yeah. all right. We need yeah, to move yeah, on. But... Don't worry. We're well, still yeah, we're still very much them, of course. We're, we're still very much looking forward to June, even though it's not E3. There's going to be a lot of exciting stuff happening in June. So. Um, our, the next story, and this this one should be a little bit quicker, but like, and who didn't see this coming? Uh, but Sony announced the sales numbers for the PSVR 2, and it's not doing very well. Mm, uh, I, I, well, first of all, this this is almost like uh, this is almost like Crystal to our Square Enix levels of like weird projections. Like they were expecting two million sales on PSVR 2 at a with a five hundred dollar price tag, and they're coming in closer to three hundred thousand, two hundred seventy thousand. Two million exactly. win. Two million for the year. To me, for the launch window, which is well, like, if you, like what? What are they? What, like what, what do they the consider first their launch week. window? The first, the week. first week. They were not expecting two million in the first week. The launch window is like three months, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think it's closer to three months. But I'll double check where I saw this. The point is, the point is, um, the only way they're going to be able to like start seeing the numbers that they want is if they seriously consider a price drop which obviously a price drop was an inevitable was inevitable they, i mean they have to price drop it the thing exists and it's and they're gonna have to do and they're gonna have to do it before the holidays because these things are what, sitting in warehouses and on shelves and they are not moving that's they're, right they're because they cost the price by 200 bucks when you that's, when your proprietary peripheral that is required to play very very specific small library of games costs as much or in excess of the system you have to purchase in order we, we to use the peripheral, explain this. he could have been of a problem here. We don't. We don't even need to explain this. This. This is barely a topic. Of course, it's sold like shit. Like it's overpriced. And who asked for it? Okay. Honestly, it's not a surprise. Let's just hope it's. Uh, Hell, I yeah. I bought one, and I don't find it surprising at all. You but I bought say one, Nick. Yes, yeah, you did. dude. I, have, I I also I bought the. Uh, I bought the. Uh, I'm just kidding. What? 
He was hyped for Fantavision, is what it is. I'm going to talk about a VR game tonight. Someone's well, doing on. pretty this well. Movie, this topic is just sad and and expected. It is. It, it is sad. sad. All right. It's, well, then, I, then the last topic, which is really our topic of the week, I, I suppose, the, what I want to close the segment out with is, is I want to talk about that new Zelda footage because uh, N- mm-hmm. Nintendo did a a ten to thirteen minute. Um, just straight up, just like, here is what the game looks like, and here are some new abilities that you can use in this game. Um, which is funny oh, to me, because wow. when I think when I think about Zelda, I, I, don't, I don't usually stop and think about, like, what are his, what are Link's new abilities? But, like, oh, they've, they've, they've come out and they've, like, named, like, four specific abilities that you have in this game without any context, which was nice. They didn't give you any context. They didn't give you, there's no spoiler. It's like, literally, they booted up the thing, and Link is running through a field, and here we go. <clears throat> and they just talked you through some of these new mechanics, I suppose, that you're going to be using to explore this world, um, which looked pretty fucking cool. And some of these things we've kind of gleaned from previous gameplay footage, that, but without knowing how they work. And now I think we have a much better idea. So how do you want the store? Do you want me to just go through the, the, the four abilities they showed off here? Or? Well, be- before you start bullet pointing, let me just say, I think Nolan should get rid of it now. <laughs> I think he should... <laughs> It looks like garbage, drop. Nolan. Just go Shouldn't, ahead and toss we should, it. Should you we, should be able, drop. Drop. we should be able to drop step through. in you and like I'm, make you know him, right? No, Nolan, I tell you what. If you're listening to this right now, I'm, I'm willing to do a trade deal for you. I'm willing to give you $15 of my budget for Zelda. I'll take that off your hands. You'll have a little extra money you can spend okay. during E3 no, season. No, no, no. You'll I'll be do 15 bucks and Benedict Fox, huh? I know you were liking that one. How, how about Benedict better than that? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. A, a better deal uh-huh. than what Brad just offered you, sixteen dollars. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. If we're if, if we're already swinging around fucking fifty dollar trades to get rid of Ultra Kill, I feel like you can throw fifty dollars towards trying to convince him to give you Zelda. He would not sell Zelda for fifty dollars. What are hey, you talking never, about? That's you insane. never know, and you never know until you no. try. We would have to pull what? all of our money hey, in order to get hey, Nolan. Him. Hey, it's Nolan. Number one seed in the top pick. It's going to be I'll, scored I'll, uh, better than anything. What are you talking about? I'll do that thing with my mouth you like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. How, Zelda talk. How do you want me to do this? They showed 10 minutes just, of footage. Just say what's in it. Just say what's yeah, in it. Talk it's about like it. Breath of the Wild Okay. Too. So oh, it is um, Breath of the Wild 2. It is Breath of the Wild 2. Like, literally. So, one thing, one question I've kind of always had since they first shown this, and I think we all kind of saw this coming, was that, you know, a large portion of this map is uh, is the is Hyrule from Breath of the Wild, right? Um, which makes sense, but they obviously, one of the things they specifically said in this demo, which was nice, was that, like, yes, this is largely, uh, there's a very large portion of this is the same map, but there's going to be obviously a lot of changes, and it's going to be, like, discovering all kinds of new stuff in it, which is really, you know, of course, of course. That's that's a given. But obviously, the highlight of this game being the the Sky Islands. You know, it, it's funny. The Sky Islands thing seems like, you know, they were like, we had a, we had a, such a cool idea with Skyward Sword, but we couldn't really execute on it. And, See, the and first time Nintendo did this shit. We're trying, this, we're trying the, this again. The, this is the Switch version of their Wii U, right? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm, if, if Skyward mm-hmm, Sword is mm-hmm. the Wii U, this is going to be their Switch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so they're doing the Sky Islands thing again, which obviously, uh, and and the cool thing here is it's all seamless. I know Brad thought I was crazy for for wondering this, but I we don't even like talk about that. You, you were insane for thinking this, yeah. I was insane. But, not insane. I just wanted stop, okay, stop okay. It. We don't have to. We don't have to talk about that specific thing. But we should mention that the part where he got knocked off the Sky Island and then he was just like, oh, "Okay, I'll just like float down." It was pretty cool. Like, yeah. Yeah. That, that was pretty cool. Everything here <laughs> looks awesome. Everything here looks. It was like amazing. A game I want to play real bad, dude. Like that right now. Uh, mm-hmm. Can we yeah, talk yeah. about the yeah. combine ability? Or yes, whatever yeah. Okay. So, so the four abilities that the first one was called fuse, which is yes, you basically you Actually. literally fuse items together. The and first one you, was that reverse ability. Oh, did I? Which is crazy, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like, it's called recall. <laughs> recall, and the implication of that ability is crazy, and they showed like nothing of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that basically so just allows you to rewind. It lets you rewind the motion of a specific object. So it's like it's it's kind of like rewinding time, but only for specific objects. 
So it showed like a like a rock falling out of the sky, and he jumped on top of it after it landed on the ground, and he rewound it so he, it carried him up into the sky so he he could get onto one of the islands, which was obviously really cool. But then they never really talked about that again. Um, but like I can already see like tons of gameplay gameplay oh, potential with that. It's gonna be fucking it's awesome, n- dude. It's not even about the potential. It's not even about the puzzles, dude. With abilities like recall and the I'm just gonna fly through the ceiling, which we'll talk about in a second. They are gonna have like moon moments, like Portal Two, ending of Portal Two. Wait a minute, can yeah. I? Can, can I? This game is setting itself up to have those kinds of moments. Well, I think that I think they saw the reception of that first game and like how like people on YouTube and Twitch and everything were finding all these amazing things to do. That I, I think in a lot of cases, some of the developers were probably like, "Oh man, I didn't think you could do that, but you can." Oh, like they're like, "Let's lean into that hard because that's what made this game so special." Like, like I, 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 I'll never forget it. I, br- I know I bring this up a lot, but like I, every time I think about Breath of the Wild, I think about Crispy t- telling that story about connecting the two points with the the, the oh the, dude the, the sword by dropping the, the sword. The, yeah, still blows my mind to this day. And they're like, that is the magic sauce. And, and what he, yeah, what he's that. talking about in the Nintendo Direct is like, those are the moments we want you to have. That's amazing. That's brilliant. Yeah. And and some of the stuff they were showing off, especially with Fuse was like almost it it was almost like I wish they hadn't shown that because that's crazy. Like, yeah. <laughs> that that would have been if I had just figured that out on my own, I would have fucking had a goddamn stroke. Like Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. So so fuse is uh for fusing items together and they showed like a bunch of different examples of this and you can use it to create uh weapons you can use it to like uh create like you can take like a potentially weak weapon like a stick and combine it with something uh, any number of things and to turn it into something a lot more formidable, uh, increased durability, increased damage, all kinds. Of, and, and the way they made it sound, and I don't know, I'd be, I'd be really, I, I really want to know how deep this rabbit hole goes, but they made it sound mm. like you can literally combine just about anything and have some sort of output. It may not all be good it's or useful. Some of the stuff he makes in the trailer and is running around with, like, he makes that long pole with the stick and the... And that the... looks so cool. Okay, that looks really cool, and also, I, I don't know how to explain it, but, like, he puts it on his back and is running around, and it, like, it, it's, like, clipping through the ground, like, it does not make sense, and for some reason, that, like, seeing that made me think, like, oh my god, this is, like, this is like systems r- driven. truly systems driven, yeah. interactive. Yeah. Like they don't have an animation for this. It's just yeah. something he did. Like, yeah, like, man. oh, That's fuck. Good, good, good news. <laughs> it, it's, it's, I don't know. I they think don't, it's incredible. They don't want to hold you back. I, I think, I think everyone was like, oh, durability sucked. Durability sucks. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. They and doubled like, down, I mean, maybe. I, and I, now I, they're I, like, they like, down. I, they oh, down. no. They came up with a creative it's, solution. Exactly. They came up with something that took the system that was already there and made it more interesting without taking it out. It's an incredible step in design philosophy. It's amazing. It's in, like I am so fucking happy. Like it is it is exactly what I was hoping for. I was thinking like I, I don't know what the solution's gonna be. It's probably something that people a lot smarter than me are gonna think of, and I'm gonna be blown away. And yes, that is exactly what happened. Like I personally cannot wait to talk about this game. Just like I think we should just do, like once we like had enough time to like really play a bunch of it. I just want to sit and have and have conversations about like what's all the crazy shit y'all have tried and succeeded. Like that's like Dude, the this, stuff this where the crazy. stuff where he's taking monster parts and like sticking them onto arrows mm-hmm. to turn them into like different types of arrows is like oh my he god! Turns- I, finally, I don't have to like sit and make ten thousand potions to get rid of all these uh these like little jellies and like monster yeah. eyes, and so- I'm making something crazy cool with them like so yeah so the the coolest thing i think they showed using the fuse ability was what crispy just referenced here was he was trying to shoot a bird out of the sky so and he tried a few times and was like missing missing his mark so he took one of those goblin eyes and he fused it with his arrows and it turned it into a homing missile that he just fired in the general direction of the bird and all of a sudden the eye just kind of like homes in on it and just takes it out of the sky in one shot like I want to know how fucking deep this rabbit hole goes because yeah, really? that's honestly, fucking honestly, bananas. Could you imagine if you stuck an eye on a stick and then just threw the stick and it was like home, that like my work, like the fucking briefcase in Hitman, where it just yes. like yeah. <laughs> dude, it's gonna what? be wild. And then it's we so got sick. nuts and bolts. 
We got I we know sort of figured it out, I but know. dude, Banjo Kazooie nuts and bolts in an awesome world like Zelda with Sky yeah. Islands. Yeah, By the way, so I don't want anyone. I don't want anyone talking shit about Sky Islands because there's nothing. There's not much cooler in terms of like a video game like geometry cooler than a Sky Island, especially like, lots of them. I can't yeah. wait. It's, um, and and, and so, when they give you this like little portal ability that you can go like up through ceilings and through it, mountains, it's called it's called ascend. So ascend. this was this was interesting, and, and obviously there's going to be some kind of like story uh, like item or something that kind of explains or contextualizes this. But apparently, you can walk into any cave room building, and as long as there is a ceiling above your head, you can use this ascend ability to float up into this into the into the air and pass through the ceiling to the floor above You're it. You're going to find so many secrets that way. It's all There's going to be some gonna really be so perverted good. stuff just for like, that. It's going it, to be so good. It's, to me, it sounds like my first reaction was, this sounds game breaking, but it's not going to be. It's going it, to it, like he, he even made a point. He was like, you know how you used to have to climb mountains with your hands and, and, and you know, keep an eye on your grip. Nah, fuck that. You can if you find a cave in a mountain, you can just pass through the roof of the cave, and you'll be on top of the mountain. Which it's is wild. Oh man, yeah. it's gonna it's be It's wild. Uh, in fact, honestly, after seeing this, there's only one other game I'm more excited about this year. Which is, and it's the last case of Benedict Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. I'm willing to trade if anybody wants. Yeah. I oh, feel like at, I, at great personal cost. <laughs> I, I feel bad because we're 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 now turning the the the, the last case of Benedict Fox into kind of like a <laughs> dude. It a fucking punchline. sucks that Nolan has this game. It fucking sucks. Like, hey, just remember, yeah. no matter this is going to make good, a billion points. Like, no, no, uh, here's the, you get first pick. Nolan talks about it all the time. The Lakers win raffles. It's crazy. Why did he get first pick? That was so not cool. Hey, all right. Here's here's here. I'm putting my foot down right now. This is the rule. Because if we continue to do this, to do this, which I think we are. By the way, I think Ed. I talked to him on Saturday. I think he's he is he wants to get in on this next one. Um, yeah. But uh, going forward, when we do the roll to see who goes first, if it pulls the same person from whoa, the previous, whoa. what are you talking again. about? What are you talking about? What next year's what? draft is determined by this year's winner. Yeah. Show the fuck up. No, 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 no. You do it like you do it like a sports league where like the lowest place person gets uh, first pick. Uh, yeah. First draft Highest. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. That makes so sense. no one will be going last. No, no, yeah. no, no. It, it's based on the results. So so whoever gets the lowest points this year automatically goes first next year. Yes. Yes. And then and then the other people we just we roll. For Isn't the that how they do order. it on uh, well, easy allies in, in football? No, that is how they do it. Yeah, Don goes okay. first every year because he. Anyways, the point is, year. if Nolan wins because he got got Zelda, he won't be going first next year. But here's the other thing: you got to remember, no matter how good Zelda is, he can't get a hundred points. He can't. He can get a billion. He can get a lot. He, but he, he can try, but he 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 doesn't have a Mortal Kombat 12 on his list. It's okay. Yeah. Is, oh, shut the fuck up. There is still a remember. There good is still him. a ceiling. Good for him. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 12. But but you got to understand, like a 90 is an amazing score. But that's still yeah. twenty points. If, if if Zelda gets a ninety-five, that's thirty points. It's yeah, yeah. Fucking bullshit. But it's not a hundred. Y'all are acting like having Zelda means he's gonna just have infinite amounts of points. There's still an upward ceiling no, on this. No, you theoretically. Guys but no, 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 no. Okay, we're over here stressing out about you know. Oh, I need eighties, and and if I pick up Ultra Kill, it might be a seventy. The difference between a ninety-five and a ninety is ten fucking points. The difference between a seventy and an eighty—that's a huge amount of points in this it's fucking a, it's game. a big deal it's you a big know, deal i'm just and no one is obviously a heavy hitter on this fucking thing but like that's what makes it well, exciting may, <laughs> may i giant Th that's the thing all his games he doesn't have any risks if <laughs> that's the fucking thing okay ah, fucking villain. back right, to the can... video game in question can i point out three things that i've observed in watching this sure. trailer over and, over and over again number one they're really putting a lot of visual emphasis in these demos of showing the dragons that are flying around. What? Yep. I mean, I mean, they're and like, just there in like the almost every shot of scanning the sky, you see a dragon flying around and the dragons were one of the coolest discoveries of breath of the wild, but they were heavily underutilized. 
I, I so, do. I, I mean, I'm yeah. sure they're going to be doing some new crazy stuff with the dragons, but yeah, I, I also yeah. do think the dragon thing was because you can see it from the sky on the sky island. You can see it when he's on the ground. And I, I think that was more of kind of just like a way of, of maybe, reiterating maybe. to the, the viewer that like, yes, these are two interconnected yeah. worlds. Now, number two, uh, in several shots of the trailer, when Link is running around Hyrule, um, you can he comes across multiple buildings under construction like it's mm-hmm. like the the theme the story theme is probably you know zelda and link helping to rebuild hyrule but i think there's more to it than that because you see signs and construction material at these plots of land hmm. so there might be like a, a oh like, like, like a, a, a like a mini game aspect of the game yeah like a town builder like a like a like a dark oh, like cloud? remember the God. village you build are you on that saying one i can speculate on real estate in tears of the kingdom that's yes. fucking sick you can that's do what anything in this game yeah let's fucking go and the, and and then the third and most important thing that i've noticed how all flipping. this footage all this footage zero shrines yeah, they didn't. They didn't show any shrines. Be caves and shit. You yeah. know, like, um, like no even just falling from the sky, where you can see, dungeon. where in the original game you can see shi- uh, shrines for miles. Like you didn't see a, I didn't see a single well, one. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think this because is because it's the same world. But, but I mean, I see your to, to his point. I, I there's I've heard a few people point this out, and and I I I think I do. Th- I mean, obviously, to what Crispy said earlier, they obviously have paid very close attention to feedback from the first game and have pivoted in a very smart way i i i would i would be shocked i mean everybody compliments the shrines for their their uh just the variety of like the puzzle design which is amazing but everybody talks about how complains about how they're all they all look kind of visually the same and i i, no, I think the obvious pivot I mean, here would be that's to, a minor thing though yeah i mean it's minor but i mean well i don't know if it's minor i after weapon durability I, shrines versus all those like crazy like puzzle designs and stuff i, mean, I, I think, I think after after durabil- weapon durability, I think the the sameness of the shrines was the second most Inter- common. You're talking place. about the fact that a bunch of them are just like fights versus those. Oh, well, that too. I mean, I was just saying like the inside combat the shrines. shrines themselves, like the the puzzle designs are great, but they all visually look the same. You find them kind of like they're just like, like Chris Davis said, you could look out over the landscape and you could like see the little lights kind of like you can. Yeah. These are all these shrines. They're not, they're not in the demo here. You don't really see any of that, and they didn't say anything no, I, about I shrines. Know, but, but do y'all know anything about the leaked art book? Mm, mm-hmm. Not really. No. Okay. I, I think I heard no. something about it. What's up with that? I'm not going to talk about it, but there's a lot of information that was gleaned from that. So, like, don't worry about. Oh, what is there not going to be puzzles in this game? No, you're I'm not worried about that at all. No, that's not. A... No, 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 right. You're right. But what I'm saying is, I'm glad that we're going to have something else as opposed to just more of these shrines that look very samey that are scattered throughout the world. Like I, I like the, the only complaint I really that like I put, I, I put breath of the wild on my top 10 games of all time. The only thing that I, 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 I didn't love about breath of the wild was the, just the strong emphasis on the shrines, as opposed to creating these like unique dungeons throughout the world that all feel different. And I'm hoping that this game pivots in that direction and focuses more on less on small shrines and more on bigger dungeons that all feel different and unique. But well, fortunately, like you said, we have a uh, product for someone like you. It's called Skyward Sword. Enjoy. Uh, uh, How dare you? That was, uh, that's okay. mean. Um, and and no, what's mean are people talking shit about the divine beasts. I mean, yeah, I, those I were think the divine legitimately beasts, cool. I think the divine beasts are are legitimately cool. They're very cool. I love them. They're, as a, they're a great idea. They, the approach yeah. to every divine beast is excellent. Fucking stunning idea. But they are. But they are not my. They're nowhere near my favorite dungeons in any of, of Zelda. And but like that, that's but, kind but of a your, shame. Your favorite dungeons are like rooted oh. in nostalgia as well, dude. I mean, dude, I'm looking cool. at this. Why? I'm looking at this art book stuff and. It is crazy. Okay, r- r- don't do that quick. to yourself, Brad. Dude, don't throw me crazy. under the bus like that. Give me, give me, give me some fucking credit here. I know what you're probably alluding to. It's like none of these are like Ocarina of Time or whatever. But like, I actively acknowledge the brilliance of kind of just like the presence of the divine beasts in the world of Breath of the Wild. I think they were amazing. But once you actually got on them and you started doing things, I didn't find any of those dungeons as. Mm exciting or as interesting as 
like there was like four or five dungeons in Twilight Princess that I think were better than the Divine yeah, Beasts. Twilight like, Princess has the best dungeons of the series. I get you. Ocarina of Time I mean, has I mean, some people, of the best dungeons. No, Link I'm, to the Past. Like I just like I'm Ocarina just saying. He okay, said it. I'm not, I'm not even going to justify that with a response. Wow. No. He said Please, it. I I just think I just think it's funny that like I don't I don't like in a, with a game like this. I feel like the expectation would be that like I don't have much criticism of it, and I'm sitting here telling you that I do have criticism of it, and now you're throwing me. Usually, it's the other way around. Like, what the fuck is happening? Like, I love that game. It's in my top ten games. Why of all are time. you so cynical, Nick? Why are you all negative? This gaslighting shit that Crispy was doing earlier. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right first you know how you Tokyo are and now breath of the wild are there any, right. i don't know western developed games Stop, you don't yeah. <laughs> i hate you so much okay um we need to move on uh i think we've pretty much covered it obviously may can't come fast enough this is going to be a very very exciting game and we'll be talking about it a lot throughout the months of may and june so, so i hope sorry you know. for redfall I hope you guys like Zelda. Uh, you should be hearing a lot about it here. Um, so sorry for the, Redfall. Are they releasing in May? May There's like, uh, oh, yeah, like so two weeks before. Everybody has a Switch. Even the people who are gonna who are interested in Redfall, they also have Switches. Yeah. Right, they? but I don't. I mean, but like with that logic, well, nobody should release it. What, what game are they gonna play <laughs> while right. they're all hanging out with their friends right talking game. about Zelda? Two Horizon Smash. games became a fucking laughing stock because of when they released, okay? No, you're and those right. games score well and sell well, but they still became a fucking laughing stock. All like, right. Speaking they... of Horizon, we're going to be talking a little bit about a Horizon game after the break. But first, we're going to uh, take a break, and then we're going to talk about the Resident Evil 4 remake. So if you're watching us live, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Ooh. Welcome back, everybody. The time has finally come to talk about the games we have been playing. And of course, it is uh, this is our first oppor real opportunity to talk about Resident Evil 4 Remake now that it's out in the wild. it's uh, We talked about the demo before, but obviously that only covered the, the village, the opening village sequence, I suppose, right? So I know Chris Davis has beaten this game like three times already. I have yep. not finished it myself yet. I don't know where Brad stands. I don't, unless I'm mistaken, Crispy, you have not been playing this. Mm -mm. Okay, I already played it. <laughs> you did. You did actually. I mean, you played Resident Evil Four for the first time with our with our Project M, right? I did. I only remember like half of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Brad, you've been playing it too. You're still on your first playthrough, I would assume. <laughs> yes. We're not all crazy people. What does that like mean? Davis. What does that mean, Nick? Chris Davis has played it for the has played it like three times. I don't even know how that's possible. I'm taking. I've played this game for like 15 hours, and I'm bare. I'm not even through the castle yet. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm uh, part way through the castle. So. I am. Uh, I am taking my sweet ass time because uh, you know. The, oh, go ahead. I'm at the part where you're. You got to get like the serpent head and the lion head. Yeah, for the I did that last night. Stuff. Okay. Okay. So we're kind of in the same spot. Um, so and obviously, for those who may be unaware, Resident Evil Four is pretty popular around these parts. I mean, it's pretty popular around the the, the gaming industry. The, the it's a the, goat. The interweb, yeah, it's it's commonly considered a goat. Um, I love this game, and this remake is no different. I've 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 really enjoyed these remakes so far. Even three, which is not my favorite, but you know these remakes are I'll are just this. really cool. As someone, as maybe the lone person with RE4 on their top 10 of all time, have we all done our top 10 of all time? Uh, I don't think, I don't think, Not has, I don't think Crispy it, has. It's my obviously, top 10 is like 40 games. It, it's obvious, it's obviously my favorite Resident Evil game, and it's one of my favorite games of all time. And, you know, I was kind of beating the drum of like, oh, it doesn't need to exist, or or not that it doesn't need to exist, but that it feels too soon, right? I feel like it feels it, less important still, than Resident Evil 2 Remake. Of yeah. course, because of course, of it, yeah. because when the original still feels like great and amazing to play, and still you know, up res it PC version whatever, still you know it, it felt too early Be because I feel like if this ha if this remake happened ten years from now, it would be even more magical. But actually playing the game, it's like oh well, I love Resident Evil Four, and 
what I'm enjoying the most playing this game is every time it's different than what I'm expecting. Resident Evil 4 is a a game that I know know really well. And and I I didn't know so much about this remake. I knew there was going to be some differences. But I was I've been surprised by how much it is like surprising me of like, oh wait, this isn't how yeah, it was. It and, is and this and they're even getting a little clever with it. And it, it's very exciting for me. It's very exciting for me. That and I feel like I'm always on my back foot. And that didn't happen to me with Resident Evil 4, the main game anymore. So it's nice to play a game I love, constantly be surprised. And to also feel like, you know, actually threatened by the things that I'm coming across yeah. to a point. Yeah, like I, I'm getting, I, I'm feeling more power, a little bit more powerful now, where I'm kind of like not as afraid of fucking up things. But I'm definitely getting fucked up more in this game than I have in the last many times I've played Resident Evil Four. So I, I it's yeah. exciting. You know, I, I would say that, uh, yeah, to what you said about uh, being put, being put on your back foot. Um, after a certain point in the original Resident Evil 4, you do feel like a god. You just got to position yourself correctly. In this, there's not a scenario in which you don't feel threatened at all. Yeah, I mean, they've been mixing things up in some really interesting ways. I I, I will say this, and, and I, you know, I, I know I've kind of beat this drum for a long time of Resident Evil 4 is not my favorite because it skews more towards action and less towards, like, I mean, I know it's, Saying it's not horror is a dumb statement. I would never say that because it is absolutely a horror game. But it doesn't skew toward... It doesn't... The Resident Evil 4, even the first time I ever played it, I don't think it ever... It, it very rarely made me feel that like sense of dread that, that I, I associate with the series nowadays. It, it, it always, I always, Once I got comfortable with like the mechanics and moving around and shooting and everything, I was kind of... It was kind of like running and gunning. It was a very smart game it was very well designed and it felt great to do those things but i very rarely felt threatened um and i've been beating this drum of like the reason i love the resident evil 2 remake so much is because it kind of just it it heightened everything it made everything feel so much more intense and it like it used it used like contrast and darkness and light and and atmosphere in ways that i never that i hadn't really experienced since maybe resident evil 1 remake so I i was it was really great to see that game that i love kind of elevated like that i was worried that this game was not gonna feel that way but it absolutely yeah. does it absolutely does and yeah. it, so this is like the perfect like i honestly think by the time this is over resident evil remake f- resident evil 4 remake will be my favorite version of resident evil 4 because That's not too it, surprising it, i know but like I, I could see i could see maybe a lot of purists being like it's great but like it's not it's not better than the original but for me well, i mean i i still i still like the feel of the gunplay more in the original but i mean there's a lot i mean it's not so different that i would be like you're crazy you know i, yeah. I don't I, I think you're not you're going to find a lot of, you're not going to find too many people who would consider that statement shocking (laughs) yeah which honestly i didn't i i thought if i was to say that it would be more going into it before i had actually played much of it i was like if i end up liking this more than the original i feel like it's gonna be a pretty controversial take but like because resident evil 4 is such a beloved game but but this is this is kind of blowing past my expectations in in almost every way and and a lot of that like just like look at this village like if you're watching the footage you're watching us record this live like this when you go back to the village and it's nighttime and it's raining and there's fire and everything, I was like, this is just, it's, and it's so like, I don't know. I, they've captured, they've captured that, like that dreadful atmosphere of like Resident Evil two, but like they haven't sacrificed any of that, like really smart, uh, like, uh, encounter design or, enemy uh like ai and it, like all that stuff and is still here. if anything they've enhanced although it. i just realized god i just realized they didn't do the gondola thing you know i need to keep track of all the shit whoa, that whoa, they whoa. don't don't do whoa, whoa, whoa. Wh- which gondola thing are you talking about i'm trying you to know, oh, before, oh, you, oh, before oh. you get to the castle yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that is like it, they tease that um, but that's it. that's certainly going to be something that's gonna, that's going to appear in the separate ways uh, DLC. 
What? Which is you think there's going to be separate ways deals? They, they, there's think, already been data mining, and they're already finding folders re- specifically referencing separate ways. I think it's kind of inevitable for a game like this. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like they already know. have the like they don't have to figure out what the DLC is. It's like it's already kind of built into <laughs> it, built into it. I'm so but, mystified playing this game that I'm not even thinking about like what's not there. C- can I ask you a question? Maybe it's uh-huh. a spoiler, but it's not really a spoiler. Do they still do the invisible? bugs or did they cut those invisible do you bugs. want, do you want the answer even... i will tell you yeah i want the answer, I want oh, the answer. Oh, oh yeah, yeah i know what you're talking about now yes they do it okay okay i mean yeah i, I don't consider re4 spoilers but whatever yeah i mean I'm, i mean that's not it's not a big one at least so i was just curious i'm gonna be honest so, so like my fear going into this was this was going to be more resident evil 3 remake than resident evil 2 remake because Resident Evil Three, the, while I like that game a lot, it is it is it is so obvious what they cut that it's so dis- it's distracting. Well, Nick, oh, me, neither me nor you have gotten to the island yet, and I hear that they do make some cuts in the island, some pretty big cuts. So I mean, which no, I'm not a huge no, fan of the no, island. I mean, they should have <laughs> improved them or fixed them or changed them up. I, sure, I don't want to sure, see. Sure. There's well, some I, I will, memorable moments even on the island. To not put too fine a point on it, the island, the the layout of the map makes more sense now. Because um, that, that's one of the things about, the, about this new version of Resident Evil 4 is that everything is laid out much more logically instead of everything being kind f- of super gamey. Like, say what you will of the fun encounters you can have in this game. Like, the gauntlet that, that's in the later part of the village when you're with Ashley. Remember how it splits off and you fight either between a horde of villagers yeah, and two chainsaw gone. girls... Or a uh, or an El Gigante, like yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. They they that's not in this game. They they yeah. have removed that gaminess aspect from it, and gaminess. I, I mean, I think it's for the better. I think it feels better, more logical, and mm-hmm. a more interesting world to experience this time around. I, I think it's also important to point out that even though they do make some cuts, not nearly as many as I was expecting, especially after the Resident Evil Three remake, but. For everything that they cut, they add something else that yes. was not there. Like, I was playing last night, and I, I think I said out loud to myself, like, three times, like, oh, that's new. Like, that was definitely not in the original. Yeah, it happens uh, all the time, yeah. And, and, that is, it, and the fact that they're able to do that while at the same time f- feels... It, like, this game feels remarkably true to the original in terms of its, uh, like, all the thing, like, all the events... All of the uh, all, all the story events, like all of the major maps that that you kind of think of when you think of Resident Evil Four, they're all there. And even though they look dramatically different, you can you can every time I go into one of these environments, I'm like, okay, this looks different, but I know what this is. And yeah, they they walk that line really really well. Um, can I say real quick on the gunplay for the people? Who yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I like this one. I thought the gunplay was actually a lot worse than the original in my opinion until i decided to go with a pistol with a red and i got the laser side once i got the laser side i'm like okay i like the way this feels but i tried yeah. using the red nine for a little bit and before that you know i didn't have a laser sight on the sg and i'm like i hate this i i feel like ever since re7 i miss constantly <laughs> and as soon as i got my laser sight back and i've been using the punisher which is a pistol i usually uh, yeah, never nothing. Ever touch. That's what I've been going with as well. But, you know, a lot more enemies. They've been bunching up. I'm like, sure, I'll just go with the Punisher. Even if it is a little harder, I kind of want that. But because um, the Red 9 is just like a mini hand cannon. And it's kind of unfair after a certain point. Um, but, yeah, I mean, as soon as I got that laser sight, I, I now like how the gunplay feels. It feels really good. Mm-hmm. And, and we were kind of making fun. People were kind of making fun of the drunken merchant a little bit because of how much he was flipping out about the knife every time that ever since they revealed the parry, he's just been like creaming all over our discord. And like, I got to admit, you know, it is a pretty significant thing <laughs> that uh, I thought I wouldn't care about like the parry and stuff, but it's there. It feels, and it feels good. Yeah. I, I hate spending money, like repairing it, at least in the first, you know, act, act of the game. I was kind of like annoyed by it, but now it's, 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 it doesn't feel like a lot of money. And I'm like, I, I always got to upgrade the, the first time that they increased the uh, cap for your upgrades and I saw I can r- increase the durability of the knife some more, I was like, oh, that's yes. exciting. Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
And you can do the same thing with the body armor too. I don't. I can't remember. You couldn't do that in the, in the original, right? Like you can't upgrade the body armor. Uh, you? What you can, or you can I mean, repair, repair the body armor, but you can't it. actually upgrade it. But in the in the original, could you repair it? No. Yeah, it, like it was the, just a, a static like twenty five percent reduction in damage. Yeah, and and I also really really like how this game gets really into the like hiding treasures and rem- like making you kind of like keep a mental inventory of where think where treasures are that you know you can't get to, so you end up doubling back and and mental exploring image. and the, no, it's the fucking. I mean, map. I mean, the map is, the map is great. The treasure maps are a little op in this. The, the like maps, no... the maps. I mean, the maps are great, and 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 yeah, they can be. Kind of, but like, I'm literally keeping a mental inventory of like, I can't get into this. I need a key here, and you know, the maps are helpful. But I, I, I I've been doing pretty well at just kind of remembering environments that I need to go back, double back. Like, I, I, I know I haven't found a hundred percent of the treasures on this first pass, but I'm taking my time and exploring a lot and backtracking a lot whenever I can. That like, and also like the challenges, like like in the. The fact that every time you go to like a merchant shop, they they have these like posted challenges that it used to just be like every once in a while you'd have to shoot these blue coins, but now it's like th- there's rats in the library. Kill the rats and come back, and you'll get a bunch of spinels that you can use to like b- buy exclusive stuff, which is really cool. I kind of miss or, finding them in the environment, though, to be honest. But <clears throat> yeah, um, but I mean, it mixes things up in some really interesting ways, and yeah. and and it gives you reason to double back and explore areas before. That that you didn't spend a lot of time in before, um, it's just like I think I feel like the, I feel like the whole village, I mean the whole environment of the game, just feels more interconnected, more lived in, more. I don't know. It's Florida. just. I mean, like it was cool when with like the lake stuff, you know, um, feel, feels more open and whatnot. But I still feel like it does seem like kind of a cobbled together version of. What well, was a pretty fucking linear game, to be honest. Like even when you backtracked in the original, it was, it was almost like a scripted backtracking, right? Like oh, you're yeah. supposed to go back here. Uh, and it's a little different now, but it still doesn't honestly feel as like sophisticated as say the village in Resident Evil Eight, right? Right, right. Which right. feels, I mean, it's still more, like more or less of a blend. A, yeah, it's still more or less a linear game. Yeah, there's something like Village feels like a blend of Resident Evil Four's level design with like classic level design and i i'm it's not that i expected them to do that with this game but i'm saying like aspects of it do feel a little more linear than i like so despite I, the I, fact that i adore four i i will sense. say that the island and the village themselves yes to the to the point of backtracking and open world stuff it does still have that element of uh scripted backtracking um, there, it's it's not as significant as it was in the original. In in this, instead, what they do is that they try to block off or 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 uh, keep you from going in yeah. fully in a certain direction, but you can go in a certain direction to to go explore. Um, the castle, on the other hand, uh, in my playing through it, you can go pretty much everywhere. Here's here's my question because about the castle and this this actually surprised me. This was the last time I played it, and I remember telling Malia like this is really cool. But one thing that the Dead Space, you know, I was I was talking about Dead Space remake is like one thing I liked about that was that anytime you like backtracked or went off the beaten path, they would kind of you know AI drop in like enemies and stuff. And I'm like that they don't do that in this game, which which kind of sucks. Right. But then I started backtracking along a path. You know, like, remember the stupid path with um, the rock-throwing troll, which is probably, like, the only new addition that I don't didn't find very welcome. It seemed like a bad sequence, honestly. But after I got through that sequence and, and did a little bit of story, I decided to go back through there because I thought I, I forgot something. And, like, new enemies were there. Like, oh, I'm yeah, like why the, are these enemies here? That happens. Am I supposed I to back go back to, through here later? And, and I then, went back and to the main I, hall. I got on that little subway hall? thing. The main hall. Yeah, I did the same thing. And I'm like... Why are there guys here? Am I supposed to come back here later? And this, I just came back too early, or is this more of a thing that not everyone's going to see? So, so I was surprised that they had repopulated the area because in the but but in, specifically, he's saying they repopulate when you change to a new chapter. So if like if you had gone back in that same chapter, they wouldn't be there. But the next time, the next once the chapter changes, oh, it'll repopulate them in specific areas. Is it like, so like anywhere else in like the village? Uh, I think I think it probably is, but it's less obvious. I I, I mean, 
we're getting into the nitty gritty, but yeah, it, it's definitely not as it's definitely not a, as a remake. It's definitely not as like that dynamic, like enemy population uh, or whatever the system they called it in Dead Space was pretty advanced and pretty yeah. unique to that game. And they definitely don't go through, through the lengths of that here. Um, but testing. OK, what's up? Your mic having problems? Oh, yeah, evidently. I think uh, I may have fixed it. We'll see. Can I ask um, a question? Yeah, Please. absolutely, Crispy. Somebody told me that they removed the classic merchant voice lines where he's like, what are you buying? He still says what that. What are you no, saying? He, still, he he's, still says that, and he, he says, says a lot of things. Yeah. He has a lot more dialogue and a lot oh, more personality you. in this remake. Yeah, he, he I, I don't know if they got this, the original voice actor. This was going to be a hard no play for me if that was the case. No, 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 no. I, he's definitely back, and he's definitely he's he has a lot more lines. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I in a lot of cases, I think he's... Okay, I, but I he's like not too chatty, right? Uh, yeah, he, he, he can be. He can he's be not chatty. too fucking chatty. It's like, all right, just sell me the fucking bullets, dude. Sometimes if you get too close to him, like... Like I once ran by the merchant in the middle of like running from a bunch of like a pack of zombies, you know, like I was being chased and I ran like just a little too close to him. And he's like, what do you buy? I'm like, shut up. I'm he, running. He, he just grabs <laughs> you and he's like, have you checked out my stock lately? <laughs> yeah. Um, but oh, and like, dude, I spent like an hour and a half in the shooting gallery last night. Of course, you can, the shooting gallery is so good. And I did the for the first time I went to the shooting gallery with Ashley and she like cheers you on and like comments mm -hmm. on your like shooting and stuff. I was like, this is well, great. Well, the this shooting is gallery so is so much better because, uh, yeah. it, it now has like bonus win shit, conditions. She, talk shit. she does talk shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's great. dude. Ashley's great. Ashley. I, I mean, I'll say this, every character and story beat that they've, that come, that comes up in this game. I have legitimately enjoyed m more than the original. I think. Um, there is a significant missing character, though. I'm trying. Oh, now I'm trying Ashley's to remember who that might. Yeah, right. Well, don't start with that. Wait, what? We um, can't. Oh, we can't because he doesn't make that skirt anymore. Because he doesn't make that comment anymore. No, no, no. it's there's there is this meme going around of this guy who has his bulleted list of all these things he's pissed about with with this remake. Oh, and three cores of them parents. are like it's, complaining it's about, I can't see Ashley's panties. How, how he can't perv on this shot, You can't see her panties. In this sequence, you can't see her panties. Uh, if you move your camera here like you could in the original, you can't see her panties anymore. Uh, she's she's just wearing shorts under I, that skirt now. Oh, it's real. It was too oh, specific yeah. to be real. Yeah. Oh, my God. Some even if it even if it. it wasn't real, it's like, you know, you spent the time on it, man. <laughs> like it's out there and now. Weirdly enough, it was David's review. <laughs> I don't know. Well, <laughs> mm, okay. Uh, you know, sense. You know one thing I, I I think is really creepy, like a really nice just little detail that I like about this remake a lot. Even early on mm -hmm. before they really kind of show you the Las Plagas, like when you kill a dude and you like blow off their head or like limbs or whatever, you can see like the little tentacles like kind of like still mm -hmm. moving around outside of their like severed limbs and shit. It's creepy. <laughs> it's and cool it, though. And by the way, in this footage, like I don't know if y'all are watching, but I had the absolute worst luck because like two thirds of the enemies were were sp sporting the plagas. I was like, what mm. the fuck, man? This is this is the worst time for me to record footage. <laughs> Welcome to my world, man. Welcome yeah. to my world. But I, like I mean, they have they have the the you know Las Plagas like way more in this mm -hmm. game than they did. Yeah, in the game. you. I mean, they it feels oh, much more weighted. Dude, the way they upgraded the attaché case where you can like buy charms to like give you little like passive boost to like. Uh, I'm I'm mad that, at that. Because they, they got you fight it. You can't really grind out those coins, can you? It's, uh, yes, you no, can. I've gotten like four different like, oh, snakes give you more health. I'm like, motherfucker, there's hardly any <laughs> snakes in this game. Give yeah. me a good charm. What the fuck? Oh, he hasn't gotten to the snake room yet. One one of the <laughs> <laughs> one of the things you can do, Brad, um, is spend spindles to buy the the rare coins, um, and you can buy those infinitely. So theoretically, mm -hmm. if you're being, like, can you get sp sp spinals? Infinitely, uh, I mean, over multiple I mean, playthroughs, yeah. But... I think it's important to note here. I think this game is built for multiple playthroughs. Like it's, yeah, like that's why I've put three whole runs, and I'm thinking about doing another one pretty soon. Oh, I heard there's, I heard there's, 
damage. Charm that increases your run speed. Do they, do they still all do they still have all like the new game plus unlocks like the yes Chicago typewriter and that like alien gun from the I, PS2 version? I unlocked the uh, the night armor and the Chicago typewriter last night. Can I, can I just say I'm so glad that they pulled the what was it? Wasn't it originally like the RE3 remake team that was going to be making this and, and they yes. were like, uh not anymore. <laughs> You're all I'm fired. So because that that remake was a joke compared to this, um, it's crazy. So. It, 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 it is it is kind of night and day. I am glad that the Resident Evil Three remake exists, but like it, it is night and day. Like Resident Evil Two and Resident Evil Four remakes are both incredible for different reasons, and, I, and, and I'm, and I I'm so say, happy. <laughs> maybe to even wrap wrap this up. Sure, sure, sure. I I think I think that. I stand when I <laughs> my position where I don't think the Dead Space remake is worthy of Game of the Year. I think we can give it to this though, right? Isn't that just fair? That this is, this is bait. This is bait. Uh, I think both of those are are Fucking obvious bait. can can be considered for Game of the Year. Um, but Th- that being you know, said, if a remake wins of Game of the Year, that makes me go hmm. I do I don't think, think either I, of them should should be qualified to win the Game of the Year. That's ridiculous. These are well, both. Both of these games are good because those original games were good. Let's be real. That's that's fair, but like, there's also really smart improvements made to both sure, that make sure. that I think make them better experiences than than the original. Maybe. So, Maybe. Um, but barring one particular sequence in this game, I have jo- enjoyed my entire time playing through it. Uh, it was the sequence, the one where the fucking oh. guys throwing rocks. Because nope, have you like, done? Have you done the the Have you done the Ashley sequence yet? Where you play as Ashley? Yes, I have. No, I'm talking. To, I'm, talking to, I'm asking I'm Brett. No, it's, it's it's cool. It's fucking cool. Yeah, they also, they made that sequence oh, worth playing. It's cool. Um, I think you're you're probably gonna do that with your next session if you're because you're kind of right where I was last night. It's it's pretty cool. Um, all right, we need to move on. Generators got some Ryza thighs. Oh, the, oh, the regenerators are so good. Oh, they are so much better that. this time around. Don't talk about that about there yet. Okay. Uh, Resident Evil 4 remake. It's pretty dope. Let's move on. Um, switching gears, because I didn't talk about this last week. I don't have a ton to say about it, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get too crazy with this. Oh, whatever. I, fin- I finished Horizon Call of the Mountain, that PSVR 2 Horizon game. You um, and three other people, apparently. Me and three other people finished this. And let me tell you, this game was fucking rad. Like kind of blew past my expectations it, 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 in a year where the it, horizon got such a fucking bad rat, rat man and a lot of it has to do with when they choose to release these games and apparently on the platforms they choose to release them on uh, or at least in this case um because horizon is is such a cool universe um and it's they're such well-made games it shocks me every time like i see people's eyes glaze over when you start talking about horizon it blows my fucking mind um but like we're in a year where we're going to get two major horizon releases. We're having that burning shores, uh, uh, expansion coming out next month, which I'm also going to play. And it looks really, really cool. And we have this, um, which I was fully kind of expecting this to be like a kind of like a four hour, just kind of like wham, bam, done thing. This is a, this is a much bigger game than I was expecting. And, Ultimately, I think I think Burning Shores is going to have a really hard time surpassing this um, because it it does. This game does so many cool. This is like up there for me with like Half-Life Alex in terms of like the the cool shit that they come up with to do in VR that is unique to VR that you could only do in VR. Like I was constantly having those moments in very much like you can even see kind of the inspiration too. like they have the kind of like the floating hands and the the hands work very, very similarly to the way that they work in Half-Life Alex. Yeah. But, um, but what makes this game so exciting and is how they lean into the verticality and the sense of scale. And like this, I have a fear of heights and this game fucked with me real bad, but it was so cool. Like I, I have, I have moments playing this game where I'm sitting here in my room, I'm standing, I'm scaling a mountain, and I am, my palms are sweating because I don't want to let go of the triggers because if I let go of the triggers, I fall. And I, I start, and I start to have, I, didn't say. I start to have like 
a, like a mini panic attack because all I want to do is like put the controllers down for a second and catch my breath and re- regain my composure. But I'm having I'm I'm. Ha- I'm feeling like I can't. I'm on the side of a fucking mountain. I can't do that. I have to push through until I've reached the summit. And, like, you have those moments constantly in this game. And just the way they 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 challenge you and the way it gets more and more intense, like, the intensity scales up as you go through this game is crazy to me. Um, and, like, they're doing shit where, like, you're having to, like... You're standing over like a chasm, and there's this huge gap. And on the other side of the gap, there's like an ice wall. And you can, and if if you can get to it, you can pull these ice, these like pickaxes out off your back, and you can like climb it by like you know alternating your arms and and climbing up the side of the wall. And you have to make sure the axe goes deep enough in the ice that it doesn't like shake loose and you fall. But like you have to, you have to actually engage the jump you have to make the decision to leap off the cliff over the chasm and then it kind of the time kind of slows down and you have to like pull out the axes and slam them into the wall before you fall and that shit is thrilling it's it's a, it's such a shame to me that this thing is stuck on a, on a, a piece of hardware that's like really struggling right now i believe you i believe you but but i feel like and it's deserving. Mm-hmm. Your enthusiasm in everybody's enthusiasm is this is the same as it is right now for fucking any VR experience. And it deserves it because VR mm-hmm. is really cool. But every VR game you've ever played and came and talked about on the podcast, you're about this enthusiastic about it. And I well, get like, it. it's fine. It's fine because VR is really cool. But I'm saying it's still the same thing of like people who don't have VR or don't care about VR are going to be the same way about this game as they are any other game you've ever brought up as a VR game mm-hmm. on the podcast. And it's, So I just shouldn't bring up VR games? No, I'm not saying don't bring it up. I'm saying like, you know, if, if you come on next week and you're really like, oh, fucking Dredge is fucking amazing. It does this and this and this. People are going to get go, excited because they're going to go buy it, right? I know. But like, I know. I'm I'm not selling any PSVR twos by talking about this. Is what I, no, is what you're saying? Even yes, neither is Sony. <laughs> <laughs> neither is Sony. It, 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 it's, it, I believe that it's awesome. But but I think this game has a genuine about, shot at being about lost. You know, fucking lost uh, fucking satellite. I don't know. You've played several VR games and have come on and have been very excited. It, I, it, I mean, I don't, I don't feel like I've been this excited about a VR game since, since even, maybe Half-Life Alex. And, and is and honestly, I, I'm mostly talking about it with such enthusiasm because I wasn't expecting to like have that much, like take away that much from this. But every time I try something in VR, I forget. And then I remember, and I'm like, Oh, VR is really fucking exciting. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know, I know. It comes with a huge caveat. And and I guess what I'm saying is, if there's anybody listening to this who does happen to own a PSVR 2 or is thinking about getting a PSVR 2 and maybe hadn't considered playing this... Oh, come on. You, I, I know that... Single per- it is 100% of the people who own a PSVR 2 own this game because what the fuck else would they have? That's fair. That's fair. Um, I'm, you know, honestly, I'm hoping that changes come June because I'm sure Sony's going to have some stuff to announce... No, at, at, at their thing, they um, absolutely I hope have that to. Stuff ends up but on but a, but like headset, I have because I ain't I just this I I wanted to make sure I bring it up because I I there's gonna we're gonna have two Horizon games this year essentially, and I'm gonna play both of them. This I think the other one's gonna have a really hard time topping this. And just as far as VR, like there's a lot of cool VR games out there, a lot of games that do really cool stuff, but like very few games I think play with 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 uh momentum and scale and verticality as beautifully as this game and also combat is a lot of fun it's weird because you're kind of like combat is one of these things where you are you're kind of on a ring that like circles the enemy and you can just kind of like dodge to the left or right so you can't freely move around the battlefield which you kind of have to do but like it's all about aiming your your bow and arrow and and switching uh switching between the arrow types and stuff which is really 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 cool um, can I can I tell really you nice. what really annoys me in watching all this footage of this game? What's that? It's that the game every single time you pick up an item, it has to flash its UI in your face. And in a I mean, VR experience like that, I don't like that. 
I don't, I don't think, think it bothers me do. nearly as much as it's bothering you. I mean, it's it's also like a maybe you got to realize too. You got to realize too. It's looking at it on a screen. It's different when you're when it's in the world with you. It's just one of those things that feels like it's part of the 3D space. With like that that menu just feels like it's like a like a puff of smoke or like you know a, like a feels like a firefly is like sure, popping but, off but in I, front but of I your think face back or whatever. To like, yeah, but I think back to like my experience with Half Life Alex and a few other VR games was that the UI wasn't just right smack in your in your view it was sure. on your person it was on your arm it was on your right and that's why I, that's why i wouldn't go as far as to say this is as good as half-life alex but i'm just saying it's 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 equally as impressive in its creativity and like taking advantage of vr as a platform like i i think i think a lot of games do cool stuff but very few of them take full advantage of it and i think this is one of those games um and I'm, it's it's one of the biggest surprises for me of the year because I certainly wasn't expecting to walk away from it this this enthusiastic, but I did. Um, and it has a, I think it has an honest to god shot at like at, at, it's at being on my top ten, Number which is crazy. Be, number because one fine, bitch. Challenge challenge accepted. It's my number one game of the year. I'm just saying, it, it, it it's March and 2023 is fucking crazy. And I I didn't expect. I thought this was is gonna it be like number one play so it. far. I don't know. Stop. Stop I mean, asking no, me weird no, questions. I, I've got an incendiary question as well. Dude, I'm like, not saying it's my number one, but I'm just, I'm just saying it, it, it's a contender. Home. It's, it's good. It's good. But, it's a good fucking game. Yeah. I we just, can move on. I just wonder like, you know, in less than 30 days, we have a whole big expansion, uh, the, the burning shores for forbidden West. I know. Like, I'm very excited for that too. Dude, you can, you can fly on a fucking pterodactyl that can dive under the water. In that game, like a like a real living pterodactyl, no, like a robotic pterodactyl. <laughs> then I'm out. I was excited for a second. That... Wait, you're crispy. You're muted. I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was just okay. laughing at Nick's enthusiasm. How dare you? Why are you laughing? Because like <laughs> no. Horizon is you... the butt of jokes. So it's unfair. It's unfair. It's, mm-hmm. it's it ain't right. As hell, man. It's but not it's right. True. But it's it is not right. Still. It's Horizon it's so, is such a it's such no, a good it's, it's such a good series. Also, oh, the funny this is last little quick. I thought it was really funny because a lot of people were talking about this. Like, it's 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 so cool because when you first pop into this game, like the sense of scale is really amazing because you're like in this you're in this place that's like kind of surrounded on all sides by mountains, and you can look up and you can see that giant machine kind of stuck to the top of the mountain. And for the first time in the series, mountains feel like insurpassable because you know what I mean. Like they feel like a fucking mountain. Uh, and then you meet Aloy. For like a hot second, because she's you don't play as Aloy, but she like she she passes through this village and you meet her, and she's so short, she feels like, she feels like she's like barely five feet tall, uh, and you're like towering you're above her. VR headset. I think your settings may have been a little off if she felt <laughs> yeah. short. Yeah. No, everybody. No, a lot of people were talking about this. They're just, they're just like, I didn't realize Aloy was so fucking short. It's it's just it's funny. Um. Also, this is a really cool like. This is pointless. I did this machine. There's a machine safari. You can just like kind of sit back and go through a safari and just kind of see all this cool shit happening around you. It's really cool. <laughs> Highly recommend. Wow. Anyways, anyways, we can move on. So I downloaded the Diablo that? 4 demo this week I, and I didn't touch it. I knew you fucking. Wow. Dude, okay. That's fine. Shit. No, no wolf up you for you then. Excited for you to try it. You, you don't understand. Shit. No, don't no. Understand. I do understand. You're a piece no of shit. No dope ass wolf pup backpack for you then. I know. No. I was. I was hoping that you I ran would, out of time. We could talk about like the narrative stuff that you know. Doing. That was the reward, right, Nick? For getting I, to yeah. level twenty, you get yes. an adorable backpack that has a wolf pup in it. And you can't, and that's only for playing the beta. It's Did only for getting to level twenty in the beta. Yeah, well, that's that's not happening for me. I'll Still I'll live finish. vicariously through y'all. Mm. Um, I had yeah, every intention of playing nice. this, but I went and saw John Wick on Sunday, and then I came back and I was too sleepy to. to play also, it. if I can, the second week was awesome because they opened up Druid and Necromancer, and Necromancer is Necromancer. fucking crazy. Necromancer is <laughs> so cool. It's so cool. I didn't get a chance to play any Druid, but Necromancer is fucking sick. You know, oh. Druid coming back is actually exciting because, you know, Druid wasn't in... Right, all right, because Necromancer was in three. three. And everybody sure. ran for their fucking Necromancer. 
Dude, I, I mean, a druid, a windy druid, if you will. Sure. Um, sure. And I don't know. It was okay. I was still jealous of the necromancer. I mean, Everyone said good. it was like fucking overpowered and shit as well. So, yeah, I mean, uh, so, okay. So, we... so, 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 can I say this? I want to say this because yes. I didn't get to chime in about Diablo three last time or four. I was really impressed by some of the narrative stuff they were doing at the beginning because I think Crispy touched on it the week before. It's they're, 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 they were kind of bad at it before. Um, but now they're doing like some really cool shit. Some of these scenes, Lilith is such a oh my good, God. a good fucking character. And like Dude. the scenes, like the scene in the church is so good. And this like, is the shit that I wanted you to see, Nick. You piece of shit. I know. I know. There's some like, there's some like moments happening at the end of Act One that's like genuinely like, wow, this is. So fucking cool. this is way better than anything that happened in Diablo 3. Like I will say the 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 exception is that when I was getting into those dungeons, it started to feel a little Diablo 3 with a lot of you know standing around having lots to say with hologram Lilith or whatever the fuck. And I'm like, it, okay, this this is the yeah. stuff I'm not too fond about. I hope they kind of like restrain themselves because i liked that other stuff like when my body was being wheeled out to the back oh that shit was so cool right i, I want more of that and less mm -hmm. of the standing around mm -hmm. while people talk but the like know, visions cool. you get from the from the blood petals when you find them like those were always yeah. like really fucking sick cutscenes. the I, uh i, just, I guess I mean, good. um the the uh the i will say that i don't know it I really wanted my abilities faster than how I was getting them. And I was like, ah, like I didn't have enough time to like play enough of the beta to like get my hurricane or whatever, which is, you know, a, you know, a key ability for a windy druid. You need your fucking hurricane. I really want to see that stuff. I got to say though, it being the same weekend that Resident Evil 4 just came out, I feel like I was much more excited to turn on Resident Evil 4. And it probably had to do with the fact that Diablo was a beta, but if I Resident Evil 4 wasn't out, weekend. I would have played this all weekend. I just want I mean, you to know that. The, the thing is, it's gone now, and you could have played it's, Resident Evil 4 after that. It's also kind of difficult to get like super excited, yeah. because we don't know what, like, we still don't really have a great idea of what Endgame is going to look like, because that's like, that's what, that's when you're getting excited about playing Diablo, is like, you've leveled up, you're in Endgame, now it's time to like, just fucking do it. Now it's time to like experience the content, you know? So yeah. we don't know what that looks like yet. Well, I, I do I do have every intention of playing this this year because I've never played a Diablo game and this looks like a good as good as place as, as good a place as any to start because people seem yeah. to be really enjoying this, right? I mean I'm surprised you've never played Diablo. I, mean, I know like it's kind of a, it's, RPGs, right? It's kind of a weird omission, I know. I the action RPGs, yeah. I mean, I used to hear horror stories from you talking about. I, I, for the longest time, you made me feel like this was like World of Warcraft, and like I shouldn't even yeah, entertain like, the idea. Uh, uh, I mean, I, it's the way I I used to play Diablo. Yeah, it was like that. But I know, but that's, you were my that's only not, point of reference. That's not a hole you were ever gonna fall down, Nick. And it's yeah, it's not I mean, even really like I don't know. Like you gotta you gotta you gotta remember. Like for the longest time, like. Y'all were like the only people I really talked to people talked to about video games. Brad was like my only frame of reference for the longest time with Diablo, mm -hmm. and and then David and David was just perpetuating. It's like because David knew firsthand like Brad's history with Diablo and stuff, and it became this like running joke of like we should snap his disc in half or well, it's also just like it or something. You know what I mean? Pre World of Warcraft, like the yeah, of it's a different world now. Enemy. It's a different world. I mean, like, don't I'm no longer that. I'm no longer afraid of it. Like I, I am. I fully intend. I'm excited to like let Bia Diablo Four kind of be my introduction to the series. I think this this looks really really cool. I just didn't get to play the beta. I can't wait for you to give it the Monster Hunter treatment too. I like to know. Okay. Well, first of all, first of all, first hey, of all, hey, 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 hey. first of all, Diablo should be worthy of a single playthrough. Yeah, like if, no, if, it'll, if be if it'll be good. It'll be good. Doing enough new hey, wait, stuff wait, 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 wait. It'll be good. Get a lot out of a single playthrough, then they fucked up. I was joking. Back, the fuck, up. Back the fuck up. I played 50 hours of Monster Hunter Rise, and then I replayed Monster Hunter Rise just so I could play Sunbreak on PC. 
So I have played well over 100 hours of Monster Hunter Rise. I don't know. And he, and he beat the final boss of Summer Rage as well. And you're yeah. you're right. You're right. I was just I like shit look, out of Monster Hunter. Look, look Nick, yeah, I was look. just joshing with you because you're always so negative. You're always <laughs> you're yes, always I, such Nick, a Nick is, you're always such a naysayer. Nick, Nick is ready to go on six gen. You know, when Monster Hunter World Two gets announced or whatever, sure. she's gonna be right there with us, and that's sure. cool. That's great. Fuck yes, I that's am. Great. It's gonna be cool. Maybe that's, that's gonna, cool. ooh, come on, June. We're gonna get. Monster Hunter oh, announcement man. during Thank You Three. Fall and Brad has thirteen dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now that's Fuck the game. spice I'm looking wait. for. Wait. Oh my <laughs> god! I can't wait to see what September October looks like. I'm gonna be honest. If Brad's if Brad literally gives away fifty dollars and he ends up in a situation where he has like ten dollars left and he has like five slots to fill, I cannot wait to see what his final roster looks like. It's gonna be hilarious. <laughs> it's gonna be a bunch of shit you'll never heard of. I know that's but like but like that's how I mean I know this is not exactly the same but like that's the reason I'm excited for Dredge because I didn't know where the I didn't know what the fuck it was and then you bid on it no, no. and here Dredge, I am Dredge was getting more publicity than some of the shit that I mean Fuga I, I'm still not even don't even believe that Fuga 2 exists hey I, I keep up with shit pretty well but like the one of the main I, I, the reason I still love doing this podcast is because like half the time I find out about cool shit I never knew existed from y'all so there it's it a good is. Time for dredge because it also has the attaché case inventory management, but with fish. Oh, and fish! That's, yes, that's the whole. There's loop. fish. Oh yeah, there's the, fish in Resident Evil whole... Four too. Well, you're, you can you're... put in your attaché case. Dredge is a fishing game, Nick. You know that, right? Yes, yeah. I am aware. <laughs> I am. There's I'm actually very a charm excited. in Resident Evil Four in which you get a f- double health refill from eating a fish. No one's Wonderful. carrying around Gross. a bunch of fish. Those hey, are not the uh, in the footage that out. in the footage that Chris Davis recorded tonight for Resident Evil Four, he was he opened his attaché case and there was like two fish in there. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Just, all right, we've clearly moved on from talking about Diablo Four. Anything else you yeah. want to say about it before we wrap it's up? It's pretty cool. Pretty rad. Pretty fucking rad. And that one guy, what's his name? Ralph Innocent. Is that the Scottish Irish guy? The really deep gravelly voice. Oh yeah, he's really oh, good. I love he's that. great. Yeah. yeah. He's great. Yeah. They got him, and he's great. Nice. All right. Uh, let us go ahead and, as we always do, wrap up the show with the four player minute. Brad, you're uh, up. You know what? Oh, no. I what? was planning on my four player minute being Diablo because I didn't think we were going to get to it. Flip that. We got to it. And now we just we talk, got we it. Just talked about now, it. Now, now you got to pull me, something go, else out of your I'm ass. Not, I'm not going to go first. Someone else go. Oh, my God. That's weird. Crispy. Are you got ready? it. Uh, sure. Why not? I will, uh, I'll do a good and a bad. The good is that fucking Tears of the Kingdom demo we saw. That shit was amazing. Sitting there watching him make the boat and then, like, thinking back to the earlier trailers where we saw Link, like, running around on those, like, jank cars and, like, flying platforms and shit and being like, oh, he built those. That's cool. Like, man, I can't wait for that game to just, like, I can't wait up. to just everyone bring their own <laughs> footage and we just roll like a montage of all of our. I, I'm sitting shit. here thinking like I'm sitting here like watching this footage, being like, okay, but like, what if I took an arrow and stuck two fucking bat wings onto it? What does that do? Like, I don't know. I like not everything's gonna do it something probably, but like, oh god, that game is like that game is gonna be amazing for experimentation and like the crazy gameplay videos we're gonna see from people who are like way better at breaking that stuff down than we are are uh, like it's almost worth it in and of itself like you know like that that yep. is that is crazy exciting uh the bad i'm going to talk about uh this isn't really games but it's kind of just like larger internet culture um the internet archive the uh, federal mm-hmm. judge ruled oh, yeah. against them in their case and said that the internet archive does not have fair use to copy and check mm-hmm. out written works as uh like like library books um because what they do is not quote unquote additive to those original works which oh. i mean it kind of sucks because the internet archive was very is very much like collects anything they can get they have they have huge assortments of like all sorts of written documents that would not exist if not for the copies that they had you know right. and and the the entities leading the lawsuit against them are like big publishers clearly like obviously um 
it's just kind of sucks, you know. I like that. Like there was a debate about this a couple of years ago when when authors were talking about it, and and some of them, like even like Neil Gaiman, like kind of was acting like he didn't really get what the whole point of it was, and was like worried about theft of their material. And it's like, like I. I personally, I believe it's a good thing. I believe that having something like the Internet Archive around is a generally positive thing, and that this legislation is kind of just putting more power back in the hands of corporations that, you know, have kind of proven that they'll just do whatever they want with their intellectual property. You know, it's the exact same struggles that we see with game archivists. You know, people who try to like preserve video games that companies would otherwise just throw away, you know? So, yeah. Well, have have they announced uh, that they're going to appeal? Yes, I believe okay, they did. Good. Good. Um, but Fingers it's, crossed. you know, it just kind of sucks. It just kind of sucks. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. It more than kind of sucks. It's like. Yeah, it's I mean, I mean this, this is the history of the world. Yeah, this <laughs> it is, is, this is part of the Internet now, and it's just. Yeah, I, I, it, know, I mean, it, it's like, yeah, yeah I don't know. Like, like, like it, uh, yeah. the Restrict Act is bad enough, but like for this yeah. to come with that is frightening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of things happening. Okay. Uh, Brad, are you ready yet? Oh, yeah. Back to me, sure. Uh, my four player minute would be a little bit about Tech and Aid. I know it's it's more than just a piece of meat to be bit on, y'all. I'm a Tekken fan, but but uh, they've released a bunch more trailers, including actual like match footage. People were playing in Evo Japan, and and so kind of people know more a little bit about this thing, and it is very exciting. I haven't seen like these sorts of significant changes since honestly Tekken Four, um, which was a controversial yeah. game because of how much it changed. But I feel like people are very receptive and excited by some of the changes that we're seeing here and again i won't even kind of get into the nitty-gritty but if you watch a trailer and you're a tekken fan you'll know immediately what's new and different and it it involves a heat mode and rushing down your opponent it's very like aggressive very offensive which is tekken's always been kind of like a defensive game honestly um so i don't know it's exciting just to see like new moves and new takes on characters and characters that were kind of maybe born before get all this exciting stuff june is back and she has not been in an official tekken game since tekken 2 honestly technically like a mainline canon game and the way they've changed her up looks exciting she's got like moves that drain her health and then moves that like gain her health back it's like a fucking marvel game it's crazy but i'm excited the game looks crazy and one final note on that uh well we got a trailer for ling i'm excited i'm a ling player ling Xiaoyu. but um I've heard that they added like a little bit of a, an effect to the low parry. And if, if again, this is nitty gritty, but if you're a Tekken fan, you know about the low parry, which was always like a really hype thing to pull off a low parry. And now they've added like, like a little bit of flair to it and they've given it the respect it deserves. And I'm excited because I love me some low parries, but uh, that's it. Tekken eight. I'm excited. Um, whether it comes out this year or early next year, uh, it's probably a pretty good, Came to bid on because it's probably gonna review well. I mean, it's Tekken, right? And uh, you know, people are excited. And I've heard from multiple, multiple people who went to an event actually a couple of weeks ago to play the game. They got like a hold of like fighting game players and were like, "Hey, come play our game," because they're doing a lot of like play testing right now because balance and stuff. Like Max said, this Ara said this. Like it looks way better in person than it has in the trailers which it looks good in the trailers but the shit that they've been uploading to the internet is just doesn't really do it justice and when you see in person in 4k they say it looks fucking incredible so i'm excited it looks nice a couple of my characters are back so yeah that's it Wait. take an eight hype hype all right chris davis you're up uh my four player minute uh well Talk a little bit about Resident Evil 4. Uh, What? Like I previously mentioned, I have played through it three times. I'm thinking about a fourth run now. I just love how Capcom has handled these remakes with their really strong focus on New Game Plus experiences, unlocking new content, encouraging you to play through and discover more secrets. Did you know that at the beginning of the game with the village sequence, off in the distance... Yes, off in the distance is the church. 
as a really hard shot, but if you shoot the bell, it goes off and ends the entire village fight. That's so fucking awesome. Yeah. 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 It's, it's pretty wild. And I've been discovering more of that shit. Like, and I'm sure there's lots of stuff like that hidden throughout that game. Oh yeah, so I'm hey, giving you another you example right here. More of that shit. Don't yeah. act like you discovered the bell thing. Uh, me? <laughs> Everybody else is discovering. Shut it. the fuck up, Brad. But Let me talk. It's it's still exciting. So, uh, <laughs> two thirds of the way through uh, my second run on hardcore, because uh, I played standard hardcore and the professional. Um, I unlocked the infinite rocket launcher because there was a boss fight coming up that I think is the weakest part of the game. And I was like, fuck that oh. fight and fuck that guy in particular. Sounds so I, I, don't, I hate don't, that fight. Nobody, no comments. I'm not going to tell no you what spoilers. it is, but either way, well, we'll talk about it eventually. Uh, so I bought it just for that. And I discovered that the rocket launcher counts as a, a, a standard explosion in the game, obviously, but it applies to story events and blocks in the game. So, for example, there is a sequence later on in the game where there's a blocked wall, and you have to go off on a certain path and go to a certain thing and fight a bunch of enemies in order to get the item to clear that obstacle. But if you shoot it with a rocket launcher, it immediately clears it, and you can skip that entire fucking sequence. Um, same with several other story-based encounters. Like you could just fucking skip them out, even though they're not bosses. You could just clear out that entire experience and just move about, on. Like, castle gates and stuff, that sort of thing. Not, not oh. specifically castle gates, but other things. Hmm. Um, interesting. And it's, interesting. And it's just been so cool to explore these very little things that turn out to be not sequence breakers, but like natural logical extensions of what these things actually should do. Uh, it it has cool. been so much fun exploring all these different little things. Um, also, I'm loving the meme that's going around about the shooting the lake. And uh, there's a special surprise for people that shoot the lake. Shoot the Wait, lake. Man, just shoot the general. lake. That was in the first game too. Yes, it was, but nobody, uh, all the newbies that never played the original oh, don't know about I it. I feel like I the actual scene, I, I triggered it, but I feel like the actual scene they cut off in this one. Like, it didn't look this cool. What was that? Maybe I forget in the original. But yeah, it's cut short in this one, I feel like. I, a little bit, but like, it, it was it was a very small thing to be able to. Anyway. Yeah, I did that, of course. Yeah. Uh, oh, dude. Just as, as kind of a as an addendum to Chris Davis's thing, I just want to say, it's like, what a fucking time to be a Resident Evil fan, man. They are simultaneously remaking the best games in this franchise and making them amazing, while at the same time continuing forward with, like, an entirely new, like, reimagine not reimagining, but, you know, just, like, entirely, like, parallel direction of Resident Evil with, like, 7, 8. Yeah. I'm sure when 9 eventually is revealed, it's going to be wild and crazy. And, like, all these games, all all these games are good. Like, the worst one in the series, unfortunately, has been that remake of Resident Evil 3, but even that was really, was pretty good. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's crazy. Yeah. It's it crazy time is. to be, re like, after Resident pretty Evil 6, good. I wasn't sure. I thought, I was like, maybe my time as a Resident Evil fan has come to an end. I'm not sure. Everyone but, man, we are living... Way. I, I was I was a little concerned. <laughs> yep. it, it is we are living in a Resident Evil renaissance and it is crazy like the the. I hope this is the last remake, honestly, like Code Veronica, baby, it, they need to do Code Veronica before they stop. Code Veronica is the last logical game that they could really kind of do. Five seems like a waste of time, oh, but also, yeah, but everyone is expecting up, five. But All that being said, who, who, who called me a goblin for saying uh, we're not ready for four, four holds up. We don't need four are now telling me you're, you don't need five. Fuck you. If they're, they no, can no, do no, four, a, they can do five. No, they can, they, do, five. They they can, can do, five. do five, but should they do five? Because should they do four? Uh, OK, OK. To Brad's point. Yes. Honestly, honestly, I, Resident Evil, seeing how they improve Resident Evil four. I think they could probably do some pretty crazy, amazing shit with Resident Evil Five. Also, and, and, and the as, thing is, as, as, as was in Africa, though, do you like as was as was pointed out by several people on Twitter. I feel like maybe there could be some things that could be that could be done with Resident Evil Five to maybe make it a little more um, sensitive. <laughs> if you know, not what to I mean. mention more interesting. Maybe go back to that original design pitch where it was maybe, an open world experience. Maybe they could eliminate the boulder. 
I don't know. Oh, eliminate um, all the quick time events. Fuck it. <laughs> fuck all that shit. Um, anyways, I'm, I'm not it saying they shouldn't do five. fucking censorship. But I'm like, not saying they shouldn't do five. All I'm saying is they should at least do Code Veronica because that one needs a remake. Yeah, and I but, love Code Veronica, but it needs the it needs that it needs that treatment that Resident yeah. Evil two and four have had so far. I I, sure. I I think Code Veronica is the black sheep of all the the mainline Resident Evil games. But that's a but whole strangely enough, it's one of the ones I have the most fond memories of. Like I adored Resident Evil Code Veronica, but like it nowadays it doesn't hold up very well. Uh, because, you know, it really fumbles with, like, it's, like, voice acting and s- storytelling and all that and shit. And, like, also, you know, it's, it's, it's boss fights all suck. But, like, they could make all those things good. They absolutely I could. They it, absolutely could. It, it, like, yeah. I, like th- there, are, there are points in Resident Evil Code Veronica I fucking adore. I just can't get past some of the other, sh- like, just terrible things around it i hope they remake that before they if they do five great as long they they need to do they need to do good veronica but but here's Um, here's the thing is that in playing through four three times now um i've taken note of a lot of the friendly ai especially especially when you're around louise uh like when you're playing with him like that ai is so particularly developed I would not put it past them to prioritize a five remake. Hmm. Well, I mean, there's, there, I mean, there's the original well, I guess, yeah, five you just, sold extremely well. It was for a long time. It was the best selling Resident Evil. Game. I mean, let's be honest, guys. Let's be honest. When are we going to, when, when is, uh, uh, oh my God, why am I blanking on her name? Dino Crisis? No, 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 no. From Resident Evil 5, what was the main, what was her name? The main character Sheva? outside from... Sheva? Sheva. When the fuck is Sheva ever... Like, every character in this fucking series has had at least two appearances. And we haven't had a Sheva appearance since 5. Come on. she. Everybody loves Sheva. She needs oh, to come back. Rebecca also didn't get justice and... Like, she was never... in Zero. She was in Zero. Other than the but remake, hey. we never saw Ashley again, but... Okay. All we right, just we, need more we, Resident Evil ladies. That's that's just that's the most important thing here is that we need more Resident I mean, Evil ladies. Yeah, you're right. What's that chick from Resident Evil Six? Maybe put her in a good game. All right. Um, I need to do my four player minute. Okay. What? That wasn't your four player. Oh my god. Nope. This sorry. This is. I'll keep this brief. Uh, <laughs> uh, fucking. I've been thinking about this for a while. We had some conversations in Discord, and it just kind of lit a fire under me. Uh, I've been thinking about making the the jump to an OLED TV. Um. Uh, and I just did it. Uh, yeah. So it's exciting stuff. I've, I've, and honestly, I feel like a part of it, part of the thing that convinced me was actually playing Metroid on my switch handheld and just kind of seeing how like, like the contrast of like, like the darks are really, really dark on, on the screen. I was just like, okay, this is, this is really nice. And I've been noticing it a lot, like playing Hogwarts playing and in some places, Resident Evil four, like when I walk into a room or like a cave or something and I was like, I really shouldn't be able to see this well <laughs> in this room. Um, but I totally can. I, it's just like, ugh, I'm going to do it. So I fucking did it. So yeah, I, I, I bought a TV and I'm excited to play, uh, games because the contrast on it is, is incredible. And like the vibrancy of like the colors and stuff is amazing. And it's making me and like, also, as an addendum, they uh, Square Enix released the first trailer for for Final Fantasy 16 that just focuses entirely on like the world. They did, and I am so excited for that game. I, I, I was already excited because I, I love Final Fantasy just in general, but oh, like, were you? but but like, worlds have always been the thing that excites me about Final Fantasy, and like, I wanted to get a, a better look because so much of what they've shown in Final Fantasy 16 so far has been about like kind of like this like dark political story and it takes place at night and you just don't really get a good look at like how vibrant the world is and this they finally released a trailer with like three or four solid minutes of like just the character walking through like big lush forests or deserts and all this shit and it's like that's what i want to fucking see and i'm i'm so excited and i'm excited to, i think it's going to look amazing on an oled tv um so let me tell know. you as I'm, the owner of an oled OLED, yes, it's fucking gorgeous. Mm. I'm, I'm fucking excited. It's gonna, it, I'm fucking it's excited. gonna look terrible on the TVs of us pores, crispy. I know, right? Yeah, sorry guys, sorry. Uh, I sorry. offered y'all my my current OLED. You turned me yeah. down. We're both trying to offload TVs now, um, <laughs> so that's just a thing that's happening. Anyways. Uh, I think we can go ahead and wrap it up there, guys. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for listening once again. 
Uh, it's been an exciting week. Also, I, you know, Fantasy Critic continues to be amazing. I'm so glad we found this. It's so much fun. Brad pointed out to me just kind of casually in Discord that we're basically reality TV now. Uh, so we got we to gotta, we gotta bring the spice well, week with, to week. With the fucking voting we are. <laughs> it's <laughs> taken over 60% of the podcast at this point. Dude, Dude. I want to say maybe as a final thought here, like there are games that exist. And I finally remember the names. Games like Neptune's Pride and Subterfuge that are like, they're they're games that are they they're not like board games they're not like video games they're games you like they're like social games you like play in a browser but the, the whole point is they're like they're games that it's like fantasy critic where we're making decisions and making deals but it's more about alliances and backstabs and it, it carries over like weeks and stuff and I heard those games get fucking real, like they destroy friendships and stuff. But it's the same sort of excitement, I think, that would happen from week to week. Um, but, yeah, maybe I'll look into seeing if that's viable for somebody like yeah. that. People who are like us. But, that would be um, cool. That would be cool. Yeah, also, also one more final thought. Um, uh, if you don't watch Psych Odyssey, you don't care about video games. There we go. Great final thought. Um I've almost started watching that three times this week. Uh, and I will. I will. I'll eventually get there. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Fourplayernetwork.com is, of course, the website. But more importantly than that, you can join us every day in Discord at discord.gg slash fourplayer. It's happening. It's hopping. It's great fun. We have a fantasy critic channel set up there where we're constantly uh, getting spicy. It's great. Um, so join us there. And if you're new, stop by and say hello. Introduce yourself in the introductions channel. We would love to hear from you. But um, until next week, everybody, uh, be good to each other, play video games, and uh, good night. Bye.